Crazy Alice called. Like, all calm and everything. She was excited. Steve Langford from the Howard 100 Newsroom is uh, doing a story on her. They're, you know, a day in the life of Alice kind of thing. And she's all calm about it, right? Is Artie coming back to the show? I don't know. Is he okay? He's out there. He was just in the hall. I'll go look. This isn't like him. No, I mean, out in the reception area. He was just walking around. He's a heroin addict. I don't think he remembers we're doing a show. Maybe he thinks we're on K-Rock and there's a 15-minute commercial break. <laughs> He's having a flashback. Anyway, um, this is kind of good. Crazy Alice. So, you know, she calls a voicemail message in. She's all calm and everything, and you can hear her. Like, I'm a boy. I hope you had a good weekend because I did start off with Steve from the newsroom. He came and visited me Friday. We had a good time. He met my neighbors across the hall from me. They from New York City, too, from Bronx, New York. In my hometown, I want to know, can you do me a favor? You had a show on Bigfoot with your father here. So you see, Crazy yeah, Alice, nice. you know, Steve Langford, great guy. And then I guess Steve said something in one of his reports about Alice that she didn't like. And then she gets right back into, like, hating Steve now. Oh. You know, another thing, Baba Boy, that big mouth gorilla face, Steve Langford, he shouldn't have told me the people that I got a fucking gun in my house. Now, 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 yeah, in his report, he said she had a gun in her house. Uh, uh, yes, he did. Yeah. I remember that. Be another threat to me not leaving my house because his big stinking mouth. That's only between me and him. And that's it. And then he used Artie name, mix up with that 38. Don't he ever do that again. Artie's a good person. I wouldn't do no harm to him. But I'd do some harm to motherfuckers, angry motherfucker like him and those on the street who fuck me like the mix of niggas. Yeah, I said nigger, nigger, nigger. But I get mistreated by bad blacks as well. They know nationality sticks. So he should never say it there. He should never brought that on air about my piece. That stupid old goat. And don't you ever threat put an Artie name mix of my Again. I went home that man. That man's a good person to me. We made it off, you fucking billigo face faggot, Stephen Langford. Wow. Where's Artie? No clue. What? No clue. I went out. I, I figured, Did you check the bathroom? Here's what happened. I figured that he was meandering around in the hallway, mm -hmm. maybe talking to Tabitha or something. Went out there, didn't see him. I said to everybody, where's Artie? And somebody goes, oh, Ronnie goes, he's in the lobby. So I go to the lobby. Artie's not anywhere. Now the cameras are following me. I go to the bathroom. I yell, Artie, in there? No, Artie. We looked in the kitchen. We think he might have gone down to get something to eat. Oh, my God. I don't know Does he have his ID with him? Maybe? He's been, Howard, he's been doing a weird thing. Like, even that thing with the cupcakes yesterday, mm -hmm. like, it used to be I would say, Artie, we're on. And he'd go, oh, and he'd run in. And, and Artie was out there eating a cupcake. And it was the weirdest thing he did was, you're on doing the show. And I said, we're on. And he goes, okay, and he's eating his cupcake. And he eats like half of it, and then he threw the rest of it back in with the uneaten cupcakes. Oh. I, wow. I, he's been acting strange. Uh oh. What do you think? What do I think? I'm always the guy that thinks uh, everything's okay. I don't know. Where, where's his bag? Is it here? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't I, leave. I, I can tell you he didn't leave because I know he's got a business mm -hmm. meeting, and his, the person he's meeting with is here sitting in the green room waiting for him. So he didn't leave. So he probably went down to get something to eat, and he can't get out of there, or he can't get back up in the building. Maybe it's a long line. But yeah. we have all kinds of people yeah. here he could send down. I know. So he doesn't miss the show. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? I think he likes to do it on his own. He does. He likes to get his own food. Yeah, I, think he, but, I think he uh, likes to feel like he's free. No, I think he likes to. I think he likes to order things in a way that he doesn't trust other people to order them for him. Yeah. You know I mean, like I want to say, order is so complicated. Have you ever heard of a phone? I don't know. Why don't we call his cell phone and see if he picks up? You, you know, Artie doesn't. Well, pick what's up the phone, restaurant right? he usually what? goes to? Artie doesn't pick up his cell phone. Oh, well, he doesn't. And what's the restaurant he usually goes to? Maybe we can call Cafe him and see if he's Metro standing in line. Is usually where he goes. Oh. oh, there he, there is. he is. What happened to you? You missed the whole gossip game. I'll tell you, man. Oh, shit. No. He did get food. Look at him. I got lightheaded on the fucking... What? A guy looked at me on the elevator. I got, like, lightheaded on the elevator. Or something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sit down. What's the matter with you? I knew something was wrong with you. I was going down, not the elevator, the escalator. Yeah. And I got, like, lightheaded on it. And the guy's like, are you okay, man? And I'm, I'm like, I, 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 like, lost a little time. You should have said, like, wow. yeah, I haven't eaten in, a, in a five minutes. I don't know. I guess he said my, my forehead was red or something. And I'm like, just my So card? what what did they do with you? How Nothing. Can... He said, why don't you sit down? So I sat down and... Uh, I, I, I think the guy was overreacting a little bit. You lost first time? Was, first I thought he was a fan, like, fucking with me. Well, get closer to Mike, because I don't where, want to miss this Where did you go in the story. first place, though? Like, when you left, 
went down to get French toast. Oh, okay. But it was during a commercial break. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you know our commercial show. breaks aren't that long. At towards the end. Well, uh, yeah, no. I mean, I would have been back up here in a reasonable amount of time if this. Wait was a second. Good. Where is there an escalator? First of all. Oh, down all the way down. Yeah, all, yeah. The, yeah. Got all the way down to the first floor. To get down to the Cafe Metro. Okay. So you get on the escalator and you, like, you blanked out. Like, like blacked out. Like I, th what happened was this kid probably saw. I thought there was like a wall there, you know, like when you lean back, and you think there's a little more to support you or something. On the escalator. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was higher up. <laughs> you almost Why went over the, the wall, side. There'd be a wall on the escalator. You, you mean you almost went over well, the side you know, of the escalator? I, I would. I guess I would have. <laughs> And it wasn't like a kid. He must have been like 40-ish or something. But he said, are you okay, man? I'm like, what What are you talking about? He goes, well, you look like, you look wheezy, uh, wheezy or woozy. Woozy. And uh, I was like, I, I think I'm all right. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, I said, actually, I'm feeling kind of lightheaded now that you mention it. Hmm. And he said, why don't you sit down? What did he see you doing? That Almost falling over the escalator wall? He said I was sort of like <laughs> nodding off. <laughs> uh, nodding off. Uh, he said I looked like I was falling asleep. What's today's date? Uh, April 19th. What year? It's 2011. I hope you know 1985. that. 1985. Yeah, you we've missed... done three years. You just missed this miss... our last show. Did I miss baseball practice? <laughs> the Yankees lost. So you got like... The kid scared the shit out of me, and then I thought he was fucking with me, and he's like... Then you what? lost track of time. Well, so. it, it was weird. Like, I felt like... I, I, I felt like stuff stood still for a bit, and then I... <laughs> like the guy I, in Heroes. I don't know. I wish I knew that reference. Yeah. Know. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I was fine. And he goes, your forehead's red and you look, you seem hot. And, How can uh, he see your forehead? You got a baseball cap on. He was, yeah. he was, he was looking at me right to, right to the front. He was looking like, a sec, like it was like an inch from my face. Oh, my God. I thought it was a fan fucking with me. I really did. But then he was like, no, no, you should sit down. But Maybe you're about no... to break through to 300 pounds, and that's what happens but when you get But then there was nowhere to sit. I said, where am I going to sit? So we went, you know, in Cafe... Tonto style on the floor. Yeah, like, like that. Like a Hindu. First of all, it would have taken me an hour to get up from that. <laughs> so I... I uh... Cross your feet. He was a nice guy, and we went into Cafe Metro, and... Uh... And uh, he said, sit down on this table. And I did for about 15 seconds. And I said, I'm okay. And I actually told him, I said, you should. I said, you know, I'm on the Howard Stern show. And he goes, no, I know seriously. But I said, you should call into the show and discuss my symptoms. Oh, my like yeah, where is that guy? I don't know. He's wearing a suit. Looked like a presentable gentleman. Hmm. Does it bother you at all that you can't make it downstairs to the restaurant to uh, get your French toast? Well, I don't think it was. <laughs> I wasn't out of breath. Can't you send somebody down for that? I mean, why should you get any exercise at all? <laughs> We gotta I feed should. you like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> I should send somebody to that room. Of course. Yeah, they were saying like you had some special order, but French toast is French toast. Yeah, isn't I it? mean, yeah, you can't fuck that up. Everyone, I just for the record, everyone here thinks you thought right then and there you were back on heroin. But me. <laughs> yeah, you're over. I'm well, the up only somewhere. one. I was gone for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> They already had you back on the big H. What was I? Where, and, and I was away. You know doing what it? I thought? I thought you had wandered out of the building. You don't know where you are anymore. You thought I was scoring? <laughs> yeah. No, we I thought you already had it. I, there was some guy supposed to meet you on the corner of 49th, and he he was late or there something. There was a guy. Know. There's a guy on floor 18. who's was a dealer. <laughs> Joe, you're on the air in Lyndhurst. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Okay. Hey, oh, he's got to go. He's turning gay here with his girlfriend now. Yeah, he wouldn't get on the couch I and know, that was weird. She wanted to really do him up. Yeah, right. He's got to go. He's got to team up with Imus. <laughs> <laughs> You're afraid of Tabitha, huh? No, I just, I mean, like, it's, I mean, it's not sex. It's not, we're not having sex together. We're certainly like, do jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. I mean, yeah, we're not fucking. But, you know, you're an actor, Artie. Right. Do a love scene. Jim, you're on the air. Because that's what I want to do. Hey, Howard. I'm... Howard, I was the first caller this morning. We got this connected. Look at that French toast going. I wow. know. He's Trenched. still going I'm right losing. to the French toast. Bro, how many maple syrups is that? Jeez. How many is that, two? I asked for four. That's only two. Shit. Oh, my God. They only gave dude. you two? Look at that. You no, almost passed out to get this. That's only two. Just eat it without the syrup. It's so good. I don't put butter on it. Look at that. What, is it? what kind of bread is that that it's so moist it's and big? It's that challah, isn't it? Is that challah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I nice mean, some they, of that Jew bread. <laughs> <laughs> they make an extraordinary French toast at this point. Oh, my that's God. That's definitely good stuff. Trench. Look at that. Ooh. Looks like it'd melt in your mouth. Yeah, but it looks like 
it's almost like the French toast is there in spite of the syrup. Right. There's so much. It's trying to survive. Yeah, there's more syrup than there is French toast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too drippy. Dude, you haven't stopped eating all morning. What'd you have before this? You were having a whole major feast this morning. All right, after this we weigh him. He's got to be 300, right? What did you have this morning before the French toast? Um. <laughs> Well, you had the bagel. Yeah, with the butter. You can have a bagel without butter. It's too dry. Um, <laughs> two Linden's, a little heroin, maybe? Two Linden's potato chips. Right. No, yes. no, no. Well, cookies. How many Hawaiian punches? Three. <laughs> it's been a three Hawaiian punch day. <laughs> Can we weigh you after this? <laughs> <laughs> Can good. we weigh you? <laughs> I'm not going to get on your stupid weigh machine. <laughs> yeah, Robin wants you to hit 300 before she crashes her car and dies. I'm going to see it before I go. Got to see it. <laughs> dying wish. Artie's going to eat himself to death. I'm going to crash in a car. If anything will put six pounds on you in one eating session, it's this. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of syrup, bro. Put more syrup on. He no, didn't buddy. have enough. They only gave him two packets. No, he's... I'm talking about the bread, dude. Yeah, look at that big, thick bread, and it's all yeah, eggs and so fried. And, and they cook it in butter. And grease. This is what they found up Elvis's ass. When they <laughs> yeah, Elvis, uh, right before the head hit the toilet bowl, he was vomiting up his French toast. I saw, like, a two-hour documentary on what they found in Elvis's ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's right. On Geraldo, we go inside Elvis's ass peanut for the last like time. Fried peanut butter and bananas. Yeah. Guy probably didn't shit in a month. Who won the gossip game? Fred. Fred I mean, did he really? Yeah. Get out of here. Always. Is that oh, more syrup? more syrup for you. I, 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 I have more syrup. I have more syrup. Yeah, give him more syrup. It's going to be funny. <laughs> That would be too much. That's going to ruin it. We are literally sitting here watching uh, Artie eat. It's great. Put this on Howard TV. This is the show tonight. Watching that fork, that plastic we fork cutting through the hollow. This is instead of eating Artie. Eating out Artie. Are we, what, 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 eating what? out Artie. Eating with Artie. <laughs> oh, my God. Like French toast soup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's like onion soup almost, dish. that consistency, because there's so much syrup floating around in there. See, another syrup would ruin this. Would uh. it? Put it in there, just for com no, comedy. No, no, I don't want to ruin the ratio. He's enjoying himself. You're not going to ruin that food for comedy. Yeah, this is funny enough. <laughs> that plastic fork is going to break. It's not working, yeah. He's stabbing, a knife. he's stabbing that French toast like it's, like it's a wild animal i got to start him. bringing regular forks. Yeah, you should have, like, your own pair of silverware here. Yeah, yeah, why should you be eating with plastic? This is, you know. Because you can't hack through. Mr. Lang needs silver utensils, please, in here. That's right. <laughs> Let's get the good stuff. The plastic is fighting against the <laughs> bread. Can't even cut bread the fucking fork. It really, it's still ridiculous. Want a, a plastic knife? I got one. No, that's all I got. Mm -hmm. You're going to take an enormous shit today. <laughs> I hope he can. Is he the, needs. Is the sun up? I hope the camera's on you for that. <laughs> <laughs> is is none right? of this stuff binding? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's weird. I mean, I must. You know what? I eat a lot of salad. Is there ever a fruit that goes into you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> are you anything healthy? Well, no, I eat a lot of. It's funny. I eat. A, I eat a lot of greens because growing yeah. up, we always had <laughs> a salad. Lot of everything is maple syrup considered a fruit. <laughs> we always had salad, and like the, my mother makes a, a vat of broccoli rabe. I eat that with everything. Oh, I see. So I guess that that helps me ship. There's broccoli rob in the refrigerator? Right now there is. <laughs> I like that Joe was died on the escalator. I know. It's I don't know. I weird. I, I had what you'd call an episode. Yeah. Big deal. And, uh, and want, it doesn't even slow him down. No, I, don't keep say, <laughs> I don't want to say I'm an unhealthy person, but I think I have enough episodes for syndication. At this one. <laughs> Boy, that fork ain't, is having it's a difficult no, it's time. It's not doing the job the at worst, all. The worst part about this whole process is the plastic fork. But the plastic fork at least slows you down so you can enjoy the food a little right, bit. Right, it'd be gone if he had a regular fork. Yeah, I think it'd all be gone by now if he had a regular knife and fork. He really literally slows down to try to tear through it. Because oh, as soon as one piece of French toast goes in his mouth, the fork starts stabbing. Oh, it's so fucking good. I got a knife. Okay. You don't want to make it too easy for him. Yeah. It's fun to watch him cut through the toast. I got a knife. I got a better knife. A well, what? A better knife. Right. A better knife. A better knife. Uh, I got a burn. John, what do you want to say? Hey, how's it going, Howard? Hey. Uh, 
I just wanted to talk about Artie and being the worst employee of ever. <laughs> the fat fuck. I am a bad get off his chair to go fool around with some porn star, but he can walk down a flight of stairs, get almost dizzy, pass out. <laughs> he passed out on the escalator. Get... See, but there's a real... Doctor Assess is on the phone. There's Doctor. a real uh, pleasure at the end of the food. There's no real pleasure at the end of getting up the fucking... Rub on top of the <laughs> doctor assist. Uh, hi, hi, how you doing, Howard? Hi, uh, Audie, you have a serious problem, and you got to take care of it before you put any any other food in your body. Do you have any low blood pressure by any chance? Low, low blood, blood pressure? No, my yeah. blood pressure I mean, is always perfect. You have doozy, you have low blood pressure first, and do you have any tingling sensation in your fingers? Uh, no. Because you might be, you might be, you know, very close to a stroke. Doctor, don't you have any... I don't know why you're sitting there and you have any on, on some food. <laughs> you know, this is a serious situation. Doctor, don't you have any patience on you? Yeah, doesn't someone need you? <laughs> isn't, someone waiting, uh, isn't someone waiting outside to get ripped off for a ridiculous... <laughs> I'm, I'm not ripping off. I'm trying to save your life and you're taking it as a joke. It's a serious problem. Are you a real doctor? Yes, I am a real doctor. What is your expertise? My expertise is uh, I'm a penis doctor. Oh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> doctor is He didn't seen. seem like a real doctor. All right, Robin, let's go to John Hine and Steve Langford, who... Or did I do them already? No, no, no. no. We've I just had an episode. That's your last minute. All right, Steve, You're what do you got time. for us? <laughs> just some of the stories we're working on in the Howard 100 newsroom. Howard 100 News already taking a good hard look at the voting on American Idol. Voting for tiny good. talent time has always been a question mark for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the fact that Idol voting is not based on one person, one vote. So... Get a load of this disclaimer on the AI website, which reads, The producers reserve the right to remove any identified power-dialing votes. What does that mean? Tell it's, us uh, it means rapid dial. They can eliminate all the votes. Yeah, but how do they do it? What, on I what, mean, what then criteria? they would have to eliminate everybody's vote. I am telling you, no way. Sanjaya lost last night. No fucking way. They absolutely manipulated the figures. I'm telling you. I know it. I would not be surprised. You don't go from being not even in the bottom three because of this massive audience yeah. voting Howard, to last. No. Who, who were the bottom three the, the previous week? I'm I don't remember. If, it was, if it's consistent or if they change it. It was Sanjaya. Uh, no, it wasn't Sanjaya. Faggy McGee and fuck my head. <laughs> Finish your French toast. <laughs> oh, there's a... Uh... I don't want you passing out. Uh, yes. I was just going to say the bottom three... I've never been in a bottom three before. Blake right. had never been in a bottom uh, three before. <laughs> well, I didn't know you like followed the, the show so closely. Obviously. You would, too, if you haven't seen your mom in <laughs> All right, go ahead, Steve. Telescope, Inc., based in West L.A., reportedly manages the voting for Idol. Howard 100 News leaving no stone unturned in this investigation into voting on American Idol. Also today, what's up with MySpace pages for Howard, Robin, Beth, Artie, Fred, and Ronnie? Some very well-trafficked MySpace pages appear to be fakes. fakes. Well, you know, Beth, uh, I know she has a, a, a web page, and it's not her. I mean, she, she has nothing to do with it. I don't have a MySpace page. I've never been on the site. Me, me too. These are fakes that mislead tens of thousands of often unsuspecting fans into thinking they're hanging out online with Stern Show stars. How do they get away with this? A Howard 100 News investigation. All right. Yeah, I'd like to know how they, because they yeah, made a business I out of it. Take that down. I don't have a MySpace page. Right. Also today, high pitch Mike, the human chair, less than a year after offering Siobhan the transsexual a place to sit on his face, high pitch Mike has been invited out by Siobhan on a date to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Love is a beautiful thing. Is he, uh, going? is he going? We don't have the answer for that yet. <laughs> In I fact, I, I don't say, think he has an answered on that. Somebody else has all my friends on MySpace. Yeah, uh, how many friends do you have? Thousands, I'm sure. And those are my friends. <laughs> Anything else? Stern News, you know, to the Howard 100 Newsroom anytime. Call us at 877-33-SERIOUS, choose Channel 100, or email us your Stern News tip at howard 100 news at serious radio Do you get a lot of calls on that thing? Oh, it's it's a gold mine. Wow. Yeah. Absolute. Wow, good. Okay. <laughs> what are some of the big stories you've actually gotten from listeners on the phone? Do you know, can you think of any offhand? <sighs> offhand a, big, a, big, uh, a big one that came out of that? I don't offhand. All right. But uh, Brad. You're an excellent director. interview. Did you know that? <laughs> I wouldn't think so. But, uh, uh, thank you, Steve. Steve you. Langford from Howard 100 News, a great reporter who is looking into the whole American Idol controversy. Yeah, I hope he gets to the bottom of it. Yes. I would love to know that there is something to the controversy. Go undercover this weekend. 
All right, John, uh, what do you have for us, John Hine, from the wrap-up show? Tabitha Stevens had a new look and is always willing to do anything for the show. We'll find out why Nick Manning didn't stick around, why Eric the Midget wouldn't stay on the phone, and why Artie wouldn't get on the couch, but Jason sacrificed himself for the good of the show. Right. Sal's driver, Dennis, explained how Howard is Tesla, how Riley is on the level, and how he's seen only 15 psychiatrists to figure things out for himself. <laughs> we'll discuss where Dennis came from, his theories, and how he's now $100 richer from naming the merged satellite companies Sirius. <laughs> By the way, here's, some, uh, here's something from the Drudge Report. Flash ratings blow out for, take a guess, Robin. Wait a minute. What did you say? Is the Drudge Report? Ratings blow out for who last night? American Idol. No. No. I mean, I'm sure it was, but think of who would benefit most from yesterday's news. NBC. Exactly right. Ratings blow out for NBC News. 7.4 rating after that maniac mailed his tape to them, which is, by the way, here the guy is going to mail his final tape. You know he got the zip code wrong? He got the address wrong. That's why they didn't get it till yesterday. Yeah. He got the address wrong. Here it is, his big... Okay, admittedly, he's a fucking maniac. But he this had is, thought of everything else. Why didn't the, he think of looking up the address? It's the biggest thing he's ever going to do. He gets the wrong address. Big dope. But anyway, Brian Williams, NBC News. I have to admit, I, I, I forgot to watch NBC News, but when I realized, oh, I have to watch NBC News. Well, everybody else who had the tape had to say NBC News. I yes. mean, they got great... Uh, publicity out of that. There was a 7.4 for NBC News, 6.2 for ABC News, and Katie Kirk last with a 4.2. Yeah, so. Yeah, bang. Katie's like, damn, I wish you had sent that to me. All they had to do is send it to CBS. They might have had some big ratings. All right, let's go back to John Hine. Anything else? Yes, the invitations to Gary's dinner party came up again, and it seemed like everyone on the staff took precedent, precedent over Scott the Engineer. We'll see how everybody's feeling and try to figure out how Scott always seems to make his way to the bottom of the list when it comes to inviting folks. <laughs> right. And last but not least, Fred has solved all of Mike Walker's tells in the gossip game, but the big question was, where was Artie Lang? Mm. <laughs> that one I can't solve. Well, we'll see if Artie has recaptured his sense of time and go over all the theories that everybody here had when Artie was missing in action. Fred, what was your theory on all of that? Do you feel that uh, Artie had a mini-stroke, as Dr. Asta said? <laughs> <laughs> the penis doctor? I don't know about a mini-stroke, but Artie is definitely, probably in the worst physical shape that I've seen him since he's joined the show right now. What would you say to Artie if you could do an intervention? <laughs> Stop eating. Right. Is what he, is his he, problem? He's just eating the well, wrong what stuff. What would be the other hot room? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else he can do? Because he's not oh, doing that. Oh, man. I, he really... What are saying? Is like eating he needs... French toast with Hawaiian punch is bad? Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Even if he left the syrup off. But, he, oh, but he's an like, intervention, he, Plus, he's like, he's like carbon up like crazy, too. I mean, everything is like a carb. It's like sugars and it's, it's toast. It's... What do you eat during the show? Maybe that could help Artie. Maybe he'll go he's like, not gonna, like He's Fred. not going to eat what I like. What do you uh, like? I have like a couple of yogurts. I don't see Fred eat at all, really. I have a couple of yogurts and maybe a power bar. That's it. A That's power it. Bar. For, for breakfast in the morning, I have uh, like some of that. That fake uh, sausage is like vegetarian stuff mm -hmm. and uh, oatmeal. Right. Oatmeal before you come in. Yeah. So that that kind of carries you through the day. And then bit. during the show. During the show, I have a couple of yogurts, which is a protein. And maybe for lunch, I'll have uh, grilled chicken breast with uh, on whole wheat toast. Okay. Well, you see why Fred is uh, going to live for a million years. <laughs> yes, Artie. I saw on the Internet the other day that oatmeal is one of those things that you should have because it lasts with you a long time. As Fred is saying, you'll feel a feeling of fullness. And for, for some reason, a good portion use of the, the longer cooking one, not the one-minute one. Yeah. Right. not that I had oatmeal stuff. once. <laughs> John, anything else in the wrap-up show? Or that sounds it's like a pretty full plate. Yeah. All right. We'll Thank go, you. We'll cover Artie's path to diabetes because that's where you're headed, my friend. <laughs> and you're someone who has diabetes, and you know what a drag. Well, right before is. I got nice it. Job. Well, right before I got it, I was just eating a ton of sugar. Like wow. I thought I was eating fruit. And I John, that does was... that does that make you? Does, does he? Do you have episodes like that when you have diabetes where you kind of like lose track of time? Absolutely. When so, your blood sugar gets too right, you high, get you just space right. yeah, you space yeah, out yeah, at times. So you feel this is a sign of diabetes and not oh. what Dr. Asses said, which was a stroke. <laughs> I hate to disagree with the uh, with the doctor, but plus his dad, your dad had it, so it's you know you're going to get it. It's check just his blood sugar right now. Let's see what uh, it is. I'll get my stuff. All right, we'll get your works. we got to check everything with Artie. Something's we need a doctor on. on the staff. Good thing we have John Hine here to check Artie. I love checking Artie. What, um... 
John Hine, by the way, thinks Artie's doing heroin again. Do we have a defibrillator? He does. Did he yeah. say that to you? I happen to know that's what I he couldn't thinks. be eating this much if I was. No, I oh, just think he's... bullshit. No, it's impossible. I think he's just eating the wrong stuff. I think that's the cover. You're forcing yourself. No, when I when I get high, I don't like blocking it with food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Artie does. Artie wants to feel things. No, yeah, I mean that's what happens. You get fucking blocked. You block the high. That's the worst thing ever. Well, you never pay that, all that price of heroin. Well, it is, it. It's a waste of money. All right. Yeah, you're gonna get your blood sugar taste tested for diabetes. Will you stop eating all this junk? It's always if you... perfect, though. My blood pressure is perfect. The diet. It's gotta go bad some at some point. This is John Hyde. He has some way of measuring him instantly. I did. We did this at the Pirate at the the All Star Game. It's weird. John's got that taking that needle before you eat down. It was science. Right in front of everybody. He at can the do game. it quickly, huh? Yeah, there's all people walking around putting mustard on hot dogs, and he's just getting out his works, and boom. John, why do you think you got diabetes? Is that something like you brought on from bad eating? Uh. Because why doesn't it go away if you eat good? Um, I was. I think I was genetic. I think I was genetically predisposed to okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I, I ate like already ate. You did all the time. I'd have like a box box of pop tarts for breakfast and like a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream for dinner, and that, yeah, that just, didn't help. That me. was the the thing you messed he's up. A the shit dinner eater. with the Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> you could tell John likes the shit food. Is he measuring you now? No, he didn't get it ready. He's got a prick him. Give me a prick. <laughs> there he goes. Which one? I don't care. This is so cool. Oh, because you got the blood? What does he do? Eject you, Artie? Yeah, well, you just... I it's think like, it's a little it's like giving blood. blood. Give it like... What does it mean? What am I looking at? That's your blood sugar level. What does that mean? 152 is your blood sugar level. What does right. that mean, John? We don't know... <laughs> John, get on a microphone. Yeah, what we can't doing? hear you, and we don't know what you're talking about. What the fuck is your problem? Well, I just had French toast. His blood sugar level is 152. Is, what is does that, that mean? High? A normal, oh, it's a little high. A normal blood sugar level is 100. Whoa. Like if your Whoa. body's working right, it doesn't matter what you eat. Your body produces enough, enough insulin and it keeps you level. After you eat, sometimes your blood sugar goes up. Mm -hmm. and well, I just had French toast with syrup. Yeah, but so how long does that take to get into the system? It takes a little time, but like when I got diagnosed, my blood sugar was like 400. Like, Whoa. Oh, so he's on his way is what you're saying. Well, I mean, he's he just a ate a meal. Break. You can even, vary between 80 and 120. It's close to being a problem. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it isn't. He could go up another 100 pounds before he has a problem. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I mean. Because I've been eating cookies and a wine punch all morning, and it's, it's probably normally about 120-something. If you, yeah, if he had it right now, it would be like 600. Right. And, and you couldn't move. You'd just be in, like, right. diabetic It's a major coma. disease. Get on the scale. <laughs> Leave him alone. I do want to, you know, once he hits 300, I know this You don't want to miss it? But it'll stop. I know that's the thing he needs. <laughs> You think so? Well, do you think there's any chance that Artie's blood sugar is 1,151 and he rolled it completely yeah. over? I don't have that extra digit. You know? But, uh, no, nah, I, I feel bad because I know he's going to get it, man, and it's, it, it's not He seems fun. pretty good right now. He's falling asleep on the escalator. Well, he's a, you're surprised his blood sugar was that low, aren't you? Yeah, I yeah, thought it'd be higher. Me. I'm fine. All right, let's go do the news, Robin. Artie this can't is a be terrible intervention. We're reinforcing yes. Artie. But my saying is that he's again, going, like my, my blood pressure is always perfect. As a matter of fact, the doctors always say you got like perfect blood pressure, and uh, the blood sugar is always good too. So then, why are you almost passing out? I because mean, I'm out of shape. I'm fat. Yeah. Something's got to be causing that, Artie. I'll still take anybody here in basketball. Sure. <laughs> All right, it's your life. <laughs> Thank you for giving it back to me. <laughs> You'll have to walk around with those works. Yeah. I hope he doesn't get it confused with his heroin work. <laughs> now there's blood all over page six. Oh, that's so man, that's bleeding a lot with that shit. Little prick there. All right, Robin, what's Maybe in the news? Maybe you have a bleeding disease. <laughs> You've got something. All right. Zero, where do we begin? The Sanjaya conspiracy. Howard saying he's just depressed and loop, uh, lumping Robin into that mix. Does Artie have diabetes? We'll see. 
I think he does eventually, but I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. And where was he during? And where was he during the gossip game? Every time she comes on the show, she'll she'll talk about all these beefs she has with people, and I get all excited about the segment. And then she comes in, and it's like, oh, no problem, you know, we're fine. It's like, come on, she was liver. She was pissed at him, but not as pissed as she was no. in the emails and talking no. to Will yesterday. That whole, <clears throat> excuse me, that whole segment just fell flat because she came in with all this great stuff. Like, you know, she's like, I want to give Artie a lap dance. It's going to be fun. And then he wasn't into that. Yeah, that was my next question. Hopefully, Artie will stop by. What was going on there? Like, Artie wanted no part of that couch and. Thankfully, Jason did, and we'll get him in here to talk about that. See, I, I thought that what turned Artie off, I mean, there's a thousand things that turn Artie off. You never know. Like, Artie admittedly has been with a whore, yet there could be something about Tabitha that skeeves him, and you, you'll never know what it is. I don't think that's what it was. Tabitha said, this to me was the, you know, the bell that went off in my head. Tabitha says, come on, Artie, come on over here, sit on the couch, and take your shirt off. And I don't think he was interested in doing that. Well, he, he didn't have to get naked, Jason. No, I know, but I think that if he would have gone over there, she would have said, take your shirt off, and... Howard would have hassled him to do it. He didn't want to do it. I think that's part of it. But he's taken a shirt off yeah. before. I know, but I don't know. He, he's he got to be in the mood. I don't, I don't know what mood he was in by the end of the show. I was thinking it was this girl that he started seeing, and she'd give him a hard time about it. But he even went that out was once. ridiculous. He went out with her once. Now, without anyone coming to the couch, you know, the segment was going as it was. But one man braved the couch and took one for the team. Saved and the day. Saved the day, and here he is, Jason Kaplan. Yeah, way, way to save the day. That was all. Awesome. I'll do that anytime. J- Jason, did you enjoy your experience yeah, on the couch? Totally. Now, now, can you describe what was going on there? You were just taking pictures, and what happened? You know, I was sitting there taking pictures of her because you know she got naked, and I thought Artie might go over and do that thing. And then she was determined to demonstrate, I guess, her skills. So she said, "Hey, Jason, why don't you come over here?" And I, you know, I want to. I was just waiting to make sure I was cool with Howard. Once he said it was okay, it was great. You know, I mean, it was just like, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. It was just I didn't, like you know being what? in a strip club. You I know? Was, she was naked. She got on top of me. She, she, you know. Or she shoved her tit in your mouth. Yeah, that was an accident. But, uh, you know, those things those things happen in a line of duty. Jason's so hungry these days. He'll eat anything that comes <laughs> to his mouth. I, I think this is the new confident Jason. You know, he's tell, putting me in my place for music yesterday. He's lost a few pounds. He's skinny now. He's, uh, is that true? Are you a new man? Are you feeling like... Uh, you, no, I'm totally. I'm definitely feeling better than uh, the last time I talked on the air about a uh, depression in February. Well, before the diet, if this situation occurred, would you have done the same thing? Yeah, but I would have been way more uh, embarrassed and shy about it. Like, I mean, dude, trust me. Not that I have a physique that's dying to be shown off anywhere, but uh, take, but no one, no. I mean, take that bitch. Right, J- Jason's like one of those fat chicks that loses ten pounds and she thinks she could wear like a little belly shirt. Thirty-five now. pounds, asshole. Hurt, I'm not wearing it? a belly shirt. Hey, I've seen Jason in shorts in the office lately, and uh, well, I'm going to the gym. That's right. I'm losing more weight. You and Scott in the shorts working out. I'm st- I listen. I'm still very fat, but but before I was obese. I mean, you know, I wasn't that far behind Artie. Now, when Tabitha noticed your condition at the end of the segment there, were you embarrassed or proud of uh, being erect? Yeah, what's your problem getting a hard on in the air? What's your gross? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was that's chub- a joke for those of you listening. Yeah, I, I, was, I was chubbed up, and, you know, I think that's a sign of health, not a... <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It, it, do you think it's wrong if a, if, a, if a porn star lays all over you and you're attracted to her, you think it's wrong to be chubbed up? No, well, I guess not. I mean, it happens. She was sitting on my crotch. She was I had my shirt up. She's rubbing her fingers up and down. She's playing with my nipples. She's sticking her boob in my face. I mean, what? what I, I thought some, you said you were chubbed. Though. Something's got to stir. You were chubbed, not boner. I didn't. She said I had a full boner. I we did. Boner. We did a contest on the air once. I just got to remind you guys of this. We had this machine. It's called. Uh, uh, I wish I could remember what the hell it was called. A plus. It had some scientific name, but basically, we called it a pecker checker. You put this rubber band that's attached to a wire, you put it around your penis. This is the thing that they use for uh, pedophiles to see if they're cured. They show them, like, d- d- you know, ch- child pornography and see if they get aroused. It measures an arousal. <laughs> so we got this machine, and we decided to bring in, like, a chick that we were all attracted to and just have her, like, rub our back and see how long it took us to get erect. And I've always had a big crush on Janine Lindemuller, you know, Janine yeah. the porn star. And this is back in her day when Janine was, like, smoking hot. I think she, like, started to rub my back. Like, the way, like, a massage, I think it took me about 11 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, the coolest the coolest part of that, there, there was, like, a second. Like, kind of like, you know, how Artie lost track of time for a second. Like, there was a second where I forgot I was on the air, where I forgot I had a girlfriend, where I forgot there was anyone in the room but me and Tabitha for, like, a half a second. And it was awesome. That was the best second uh, there was today for me. Until and you I, snapped that, and, that, and, then I, and then when I realized it, I just saw Robin staring at me laughing. And that's when I asked her to stop uh, looking at me. So where are you right now in terms of the... Um, of putting together the plan for how to take this to your girlfriend. Okay, well, she was at work. Okay, uh, do you, so, do you, do you, does your girlfriend have satellite radio? 
Yes, she does. Okay, so, so now so she so can hear the replay on the way home. You got to get rid of the replay. Okay. Right, and the news. She, yeah, she, you know, she, so you can she call her for her entire ride home and talk about nothing. That'll keep her off the replay. <laughs> now, now, what else are you going to tell her? No, no, no. I'm going to call her during her lunch break. and uh, as just a Too late. Situation. Someone's already called. What do you say? No, no one's called. She doesn't have a lot of friends. What, would, what do you say? What's the conversation? The conversation is going to be, hey, this thing happened on the air. Uh, we had this naked chicken. They wanted to do something where, you know, the guy's got on the couch and... She wants to show off, you know, her, her, you know, what she can do. And so it's like, you know, it's like, kind of like getting a lap dance. Like let me ask you, Jason, Jason yeah. let me ask you one thing. Yes. Did you get aroused? Why do you sound like my mother? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, just I'm trying to help you out. Did you get, I, my friend called me and said, oh, the other part's okay, but I heard you got a hard on. Oh, oh, please. I totally didn't get a hard on. Tabitha was just being nice and, you know, t- making me I, like a man. I heard she put her breast in your mouth. She she freaking uh, sabotaged me. I was sitting there laughing and yeah, it booted yeah, my mouth. Rapes. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Listen, this is my job, all right? We live in that, that palatial apartment of ours on, uh, in the basement because of this job. You're sentenced to one year of cat sitting. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That's not a, that's not a sentence. That's a, that's a present. Yeah. That's what, right. what was going on with Eric the Midget hanging up and... Uh, he wanted with, nothing to do with Tabitha. He, he, you know what? He left a voicemail. We didn't get it too late in the show, yeah. so Howard didn't have a chance to play it. But not that well thought out. Let's talk to Steve in Syracuse. Steve, you're on the wrap-up show. Is this Dr. John? This is Dr. John. Hey, I, I have a comment uh, about Artie first, and i got a question for Gary, too. But uh, You know what we, What might be funny is to do an animation with Artie, like Jabba, and then chain have uh, Robin chained to him like they did with Princess Leia in that scene at the... Uh, Job is place there, you know. Hey, why don't you write this down and send it in, bro? I'd rather okay. anim- I'd rather animate Artie falling asleep on the escalator, <laughs> <laughs> falling over. Hey, did you guys talk about Artie already? I'm sorry. No, 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 we will though. We what's will your do. What's your question for Gar? Okay, I would like a uh, autographed picture of Howard. Uh, he's not doing. Possible? Uh, probably not. Are you going to Iraq? <laughs> no. Okay, no. I think I think I got a pass. It's just, it's just hard. It's hard to answer all requests. But thanks for your call, there, Steve. Uh, let's jump to Joe in Westchester. Joe, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, man, how you doing? Good, Joe. Okay, you know, is this John? This is me. Okay, John, you're absolutely dead wrong about the thing with the diabetes. Let me just tell you, I'm, I'm on diet. I mean, I'm on insulin. I, I am a diabetic. When your blood, sh- I mean, the whole thing is about your pancreas not working properly. Artie absolutely could like near passing out with his sugar down to about like sixty, and then after having the syrup and the and the French toast, it going up to one fifty two is like it's 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 borderline high actually. It's not really high at all. All right, we're going to continue this discussion sure. on channel two hundred two, the diabetes channel, yeah, diabetes <laughs> diabetic roundtable. Uh, look. I wasn't wrong. I've had it for 12 years. I know what I'm doing, okay? When you're high on, when your blood sugar's high, you get sleepy. When it's low, you get the shakes. And if anything, it wakes you up in the middle of the night. I love that Dominic went through that entire major surgery, and now his diabetes is coming back because he's so fat. Mark in Cleveland. Mark, you're on the wrap-up show. How are you doing? First-time caller. Hey, Mark, what's I up? I just wanted to comment about what Dominic said. You know, Mr. Potts of Primavera is way off base. You don't fall asleep when your blood sugar gets low. <laughs> and you're absolutely right, John, in what you said. So. Wait, what happens when your blood sugar gets low? When your blood sugar gets low, I was a paramedic for 30 years. Just give me, do, what care. happens? You don't pass out? I don't want to know the whole thing. Just No, you can uh, become drowsy, so to speak. You don't really pass out. You become very confused, disoriented. All right. uh, you become real sweaty, clammy. Okay, that's good. I just uh, wanted to know. know. That's what happened to my wife when we were in Amsterdam. And she, she, you know, she, we went to that place and we, she had some pot and she had low blood sugar and she just started twitching and passed out. <laughs> that could, yeah, that could have been the 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 pot. But thank, that was diabetic roundtable, everyone. Yeah, now we're yes. going to move on. Pop Let's go to uh, Fred and Will. How would you describe the way Jason looked on the couch during that erotic <laughs> scene? He looked uh, scared for one, but then I, I think he started to get into it at the end. Like once, <clears throat> at first he was like, "Oh my God, I, I can't believe I'm doing this." But right. then once he was there, he kind of. Fell into it. Tabitha had her boob in his mouth. I mean, did you touch her ass? Did you grab her ass and stuff? No, I wanted to, but I, I was. I was, remember the cameras were on me. Look, she has a great body, and she has smelled good too. Well, let's hear how Jason reacted. There we go. I would have gone down, and I would have simulated oral pleasure. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I said, like, how would you have done that? Whoa. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And then I would have came back up. 
And then I would have grabbed them like this. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then um, I don't have the devil dogs. I would have stuck my hand no, in the, okay. and stuck it in his mouth and just kind of like rode him. And been like, that's it, come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suck my finger like I sucked your cock, you motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice, <gosh>. nice. <laughs> That looks good to me. I'm, I'm enjoying it. She loves men. <laughs> yes. I, she and does. That's it. Okay. Well, that's good stuff. Lucky you, Jason. Lucky you, Jason, as Howard says. Totally. Would you have been gone off the diet for a devil dog there? Or no, would you... I, I'm not even into that. I don't know what the hell she was talking about. But the, the riding part uh, was, was part of my favorite part, one of my favorite parts. I always like, how come when chicks and guys talk dirty, it's always out of anger? She's like... Suck my finger like I suck your cock, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't into that. Or the devil dog thing. Is there anybody in this room that would have done what Jason did today? What no, I mean? wouldn't have. Would Why? you have gotten that couch? No. No. Right. Sal? Of course. You know, you're, you're so full you're of lying. shit. Well, I've done worse than her. Are you oh. kidding me? No, no, I thought women were. I thought we're women talking were about. Hands off. Oh, no. Not you're, afraid, you're afraid of your wife. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that for that reason, yeah. JD, well, would you yeah. have done it? I, you know what? I probably would have uh, was it be standoffish, but uh, with enough, like. People yelling at me, I probably would have eventually agreed to do it. Yeah. Eventually, dude, it was a hot naked chick. I mean, I don't understand what hey, Jason. The, uh... you, listen, here's a, here's a hot news question. We're not gonna beg you to fuck her. Oh, yeah, I'm really. Say, I know. Well, well, I'm just I'm just saying. Recently engaged Will Murray. Would you have done it? No way. What? Why? Because I don't want to deal with the bullshit. He just signed the contract. Exactly. <laughs> well, then let me take this opportunity to thank my girlfriend for being awesome. Because I don't anticipate dealing with any bullshit. Jesus, Jason. Today. You just kiss. You just, <laughs> you're so you're just doing gay. damage control right now because you're in so much trouble. Well, no, but I'm being serious. Like getting shit from my girlfriend was the I'm, last I'm, thing that crossed my mind. I'm sorry, but sometimes Jason really sounds like a gay guy trying to convince people that he's straight. The way what? he talks about girls. I just hot naked chick in my lap, dude. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah, what's wrong with you? You guys are pussies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, JD. Now we're sort of going into other territory, which is the imitation of everybody vo of everybody's voice in the back office. <laughs> Will does impressions of everybody back there, and but when he does Jason, everybody chimes in. <laughs> JD, Steve, the intern. Who else to do well? To pace. I could meet Stevie B, but nobody knows oh. him. No, but do the. What's my impression? That's it. You heard it. So. No. The high pitched dog. Everyone does that, though. He has about 15 different impressions of me. Yeah. First of all, I don't want to be called gay by JD. He wouldn't even get a hand job from uh, Nicole Sheridan when oh, it was okay. it, like he would him in his lap. Okay. He's the only person here without a girlfriend. Okay, okay. A hand job is different than just laying down on the couch. You would have yeah, got a hand, hand job actually gets you something. Yeah. You would, uh, okay. Hardy fucking hard. A hand job. <laughs> <laughs> you would have gotten a hand job on camera. No, it was off camera they offered it. Yeah, I, it's to me too. I would take it off camera, but no. <laughs> no, you turned it down. No, it, no. It wasn't. Will, did he turn it down or what? I turned it down because I knew it would have been on camera. Will. He turned it down. Would it have been on camera? I thought we offered him yeah, audio. No, we said we just needed the audio. We didn't need Yeah, that. I don't this want audio video. either. I did that once already. Right, so don't call me gay. I don't understand why Will or JD or anyone else with just a girlfriend wouldn't have let a naked chick sit on their lap in the studio. Well, Will's a gay, so he's on the other side. So why should I should do it? I'm married. Yeah, why? I don't understand. You're on probation, you said. I mean, you've been literally told not to do it, right? I've been told not to yeah, touch okay. other women. And I, you know what? I shouldn't even have to be told. I should just know that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to Sean in Pittsburgh. Sean, you're on the wrap-up show. Yes, Baba Booey to you all. Thank you. Yes, uh, Gary, you've always been my favorite. I really love you, man. You're the best. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, what's wrong with the guys on there telling their prospective girlfriends that, hey, I work for the Stern Show. I'm expected to do these kinds of things. I am so glad that that freak is gone. Now all we got to do is listen to Howard carry on about the dancers for another month, and we'll be good. What freak? Wow, you packed in a lot of topics. Eh? What yeah, freak what are you talking about? Sanjaya. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know you were going, but okay. let's take the first part of Sean's point. What is so wrong about telling the girlfriend... It's part of the show. I'm just doing my job. That's Anyone like to that? Well, because ge generally, I can I can address it to a degree. They'll throw it back in your face and say, "How would you like it if I had a job where I had to go to Chippendales and dry up a guy all the time just for the show?" And your response would be, "That would suck." <laughs> there are times when you can get away with that excuse, but I like to save those right. for a girl of a. Not to be rude, but you know, there, we do have hotter girls on the show than Tabitha. This We're gonna pull that trump card later on. I saved my trump card for Jenny McCarthy, exactly. and I still got in trouble. Sal, so, it was almost worth it. Sal, what's your what's your logic? What's your line? 
I say if they have no problem taking the paycheck, you know what? It comes with the territory. Thank you. Then what, but you don't do anything. But right? i got to live with Hitler, so, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? I, I mean, won't even go in the know, room if there's a naked girl there. Yeah, Is that true? You won't even go in the room? No, I would. I, I will. I don't know. We'll find out. Listen, what? <laughs> I, I mean, I, what, have you been to, You're a little different now. Have you been spoken to? Yeah. What, over, <laughs> over which incident? Uh, maybe something about a sister in a dream, you know. Uh -oh, oh, my yes. God. Oh, that's right. We even so talked about so that. So that got back, huh? So okay. who are you dreaming about? And I had to go through all that horse shit with her for a half an hour. How'd she find out? After I made dinner. How'd she what? find out? Whoa, whoa, you made dinner? No, you know, you know what the new game is? I told all my friends, listen to me, do me a favor. Don't tell my wife a fucking thing. Please. You know, i got to live with this person. It's bad enough. This person. So they go, we won't. So now she gets hints. Oh, did you hear your husband today he was talking about dreams? And oh. but we won't tell you who he was dreaming about. So as soon as I get home, who are you dreaming about? So I said I wasn't dreaming about anybody. But she's got a new move now. She goes to howitstern.com and finds out. So wow. now I was going to ask you off the air, Gary, because you know about blocking websites. How can I block <laughs> howitstern.com? I, I could use the child block. I, I can show it. you how to do that. Please do. It's because thirty nine ninety five a year. It's well worth it. I'll spend three hundred ninety five a year. I think we could do better than that. I bet you, uh, Doug, our website. I can just have your entire IP address blocked. Please yeah. do it. Whatever maybe, it takes. Maybe we get your IP address so that every day you can write up the log, <laughs> and that's all your wife sees. I would do it. I'm not going to name names, but I have had guys here ask me to take stuff off the website. Really? Before before their girls are watching. I saw it. Oh, name names. No, I won't name names. Does it happen a lot? No, it, but it's happened uh, a couple of times from a couple of different people. You can do I don't care, Jason. I was one, one of them. One of them was. Yeah. <laughs> Which one was that? That was I know that was a couple of months ago. It was, it was no, the, no, it was no. a couple of years ago. Uh, it was the one where you, oh, okay. It, it, Will came running into my bedroom saying, code red, code red. Take There was some picture up or something. He's like, yeah. she, he goes, Tracy's in my room. She's about to go on the website. I need that down in like Where's 30 it? seconds. Hold on. I, so Jason, tell me the story. So you guys are living together on the weekend, <laughs> but you know that Jason has the ability to pull a picture off yeah. the website. So you run to Jason's bedroom. Yeah. At Tell him to get that picture. Tracy down. was there. <laughs> right. My my my, my fiance was there, and she was good about to log onto the website. And I think she went to the bathroom, and I ran into Jason's room. I'm like, Jason, please, you have to take this picture off the website immediately. She's about get, to log on. Did he get it off? Yeah, time? he did it in time. I was like, thank you, oh, my man. That's like a movie. Yeah, it was Mission crazy. Impossible. I'm just picturing Red Will right again there. You going Code Red? Code red. <laughs> All right, so, so I'm glad you're here because we have to talk about your driver. Oh, that other lunatic. Well, first of all, how do you get a driver? I met. You I, won't believe this. See, I mean, this it okay, sounds so far fetched. It sounds like it's it's so part of my my storybook, but it's so true. I met him in 1996 at a Kiss concert. He was dressed as Gene Simmons, and I started <laughs> taking pictures with him. And uh, he told me because I was Sal, the stockbroker, the caller back then. He told me he was a fan. <laughs> So we created a relationship, and ever since then, we exchanged kiss videos and stuff here's like my, that. Here's my kiss interpretation video. of it. Just hearing yeah. the way he paints your house for days on end. Yeah, well, he does. I mean, we drive to JFK, which is about 40 minutes from my house. And what I do you pay give him? 25 each way. I pay him 50 bucks. No, no, you pay him 25. No, I pay 25 each way. Right, and, but you, you realize what that would cost you if it wasn't. And I buy him lunch as well. We always stop at White Castle on the way home from JFK. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't Is have, there a limit I don't have, White Castle? I don't have, no. But I don't have much money as it is, so he was happy with that price. And I'm paying him now. I'm paying him 100 bucks a day to paint my house. And, Gary, I kid you not, he paints a wall a day. Because you're paying him about a day. Right. Well, you, you say, here's what it will be for the job. It takes I know. two weeks. Maybe I should, you know. But uh, I don't know. That guy's nuts. A He's wall. a good kid. Let's talk to Stacy in Missouri. Stacy, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, man. What's going on, dude? How you doing? Hey. <laughs> I'm doing great. Hey, uh... uh What's up with Artie, man? Shit, every time the girl's on there wanting to do something to him, oh, I don't want to do nothing, man. It's like he's gay or just too embarrassed of being fat or something. No one to show everybody his fat ass. Well, he's definitely not gay. And it, that's not true because he was messing around with those penthouse pets that came in last week. And you know what's funny? You know what we have hanging up in the bathroom here that every time I look at it is makes me laugh and it's creepy? <laughs> That girl that he was like eating, like a cupcake, remember? Oh yeah, the one with the fake boobs. That everyone yeah, came in he grabbed both her boobs and he was he like bit her like she was a cupcake. I so think he's up for doing stuff. I think Artie's last um, couch scenario with the girls affected this one because Artie literally couldn't get up from the couch last time, and I'm wondering if the memory of that is just keeping him from going over. <laughs> there. Now, did we find out what was the deal during the gossip game? Like where he I, went, went down to Metro, or what's I, the story? He, I, I thought that was a very thin explanation. I'll be re really upfront. I love Artie to death, but it just—he said he went down to Metro, felt a little lightheaded, lost time, which is a weird, uh, a weird thing to say. He claims he sat down for 15 seconds, but he was gone 
for a very a much longer time. So if all he did was sit down for 15 seconds and get back up, it doesn't make sense why he was. He missed the gossip game. But even yesterday, when he was out, you know, grazing the cupcakes, he knew we were on the air, but he seemed in no rush to get back. You know what, Gary? In, in Artie's defense, it was the gossip game. Who wouldn't want to get the fuck out of that studio? <laughs> no, no, but I get it. But even after the gossip game was over. Listen, I'm going to come right out and say it. I really think Artie might be back on something. I no mean, Artie, shit. Artie came back a different person than when he left. I mean, when he came back on the air, that wasn't the Artie that was on the air at 7 o'clock in the morning. This was some new, low-key, low-talking, kind of uh, spacey Artie. Hat over the eyes. Yeah, I, I, even after the show, I was talking to him, and he, he was the same as he was on the air, which was kind of not there. So. Sal, you agree? I just, I'm just looking at Jason saying, what the <laughs> fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I hate to say it, I love Artie so much, and he's, he's the greatest guy ever on the show, and uh, if he, he's mad at me, he's mad at me. I think he's on drugs. I'm gonna, that's it. And uh, he needs help. So yes. if, if this is a cry for help, let it be. You know, I, What's I the hope. cry for help? I mean, all these, all these. He signs, went downstairs. Sleeping, depression. But he went I mean, downstairs. Uh, uh, he came back. We goofed on him, and it's done. There's no cry for help. I, I, I don't. That's he can't what freaks walk, me out. No, he can't walk through the building without uh, one of the Merrill Lynch bankers stopping to, to to comfort him and sit him down and make sure he's okay. I mean, that's a problem. Teddy, uh, I just hope he gets Yo, home. Where stop were, selling him drugs, Teddy. Teddy, where? where <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Where? And and I'm not breaking your balls here, but where were you during all this? Like when Artie was missing. Do you know where, like... No, I was in my studio down the hall here, and I, I came out and I saw Gary in the camera Frantically looking for Artie. And going, where's Artie? Well, but Teddy, know. do you ever worry about your meal, uh, your meal ticket? I mean, your boss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should I get do. him one of those life alert bracelets. Of course I do, but I think, honestly, I his biggest problem is, is his sleep schedule. That's it. I mean, he's, he's, he sleeps now until but, but we 8 all, o'clock at night, we, and then we, we all, all have the same night. Night. No, no, no. schedule. We all have the, we Do you all... sleep immediately when you go back from... doesn't no, matter. That's his choice. He's getting, oh, I know, but... He's, I, if he's sleeping all day, he's getting sleep. If he's getting his eight hours, it doesn't matter where the hell he gets. Well, that's right, but then he gets up at nine for the day. Like he gets up at nine, ten o'clock at night, and he stays up until he comes to work. Well, that's, okay, that explains the last that's, week. That's, that's a, the last six years. That's actually similar to JD's schedule, right, JD? Well, I mean, kind of, sort of, but you know, I'm here. Like I go to work. I, I try and go to bed at three. <laughs> the hell's so fucking funny, dude? <laughs> I, I, Party hard. I go to bed around like three, and I wake up like maybe you know ten o'clock, and. I'm like here at like eleven, so or you know twelve one o'clock. What? And, and Artie's not. <laughs> what the hell? Artie's not here at ten o'clock at night. No, he's at home or doing God knows what. You know what? The, you know what Thank you, JD. You know what the what weird the thing about? What's so funny about that? Go back and listen. <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> one of the weird things about today is that um, that I thought was sort of odd is Artie had a big meeting today. With a guy, the guy was in the green room as of nine o'clock. I was, in fact, I was talking to him a lot of the morning. It was a big, it's a big deal meeting for Artie. So I thought it was particularly interesting that Artie's meandering around on the day of a very important meeting. Well, didn't he fall asleep on the day he was supposed to meet with the guy from <laughs> right, Peter Lagori? Right. He was supposed to be Peter Lagori. He fell asleep. So maybe it's like you know the lucky shirt or something. You know, you, you keep that going. Benji's well, here. Benji, what do you think? You think something's up with Artie? I, I just think when you're that fat. Everything is is tough. I think that's what's going on. I just think that I, I think it's that we're being like drugged when you're yeah. That but I fat. think we're blaming a lot on being that fat. And I do, I do know people who are that fat and seem to be functioning a little better. But I, I think I, I think we're giving away a little bit too much for being that fat. Well, and he's oh, always wait, saying, are you guys saying like, is there some sort of drug stuff going some on? Some people here think he's well, on drugs. Possible. Some people I think mean, it's sleep uh, see, deprivation. Well, that, well, but all that. But I really think if he was like sixty pounds lighter. It, it, it would be a whole different Artie. But we've talked about this before. What's going to get him to get 60 pounds lighter? Well, like nothing. Fat camp. Well, yeah, he, fat he camp. talked about fat camp. But yeah, I don't want to say that Howard's an enabler because he's not. But the truth of the matter is if Howard ever took Artie aside and said, look, don't fucking fall asleep on my show. It offends me. Artie would never fall asleep again. No, but no, when no, no, everybody no. Artie does hold what Artie on, wants on, to wait do. A minute. Yeah, I don't agree with but that. But when everybody's giggling and turns it into a 25-minute segment on Artie falling asleep again, it kind of in the back of his mind says, "Hey, you know what? I can roll with this. They're giving me, you know, they're giving me a platform to do it." So, are you when saying when Howard asks Artie, you know, when Howard spends 25 minutes on Artie's pancakes, it's always funny. So, again, I think Artie's saying, "What the fuck? They love when I eat. They love when I sleep." You know, so I mean, how you're asking, this guy, you're asking this guy to change, yet he makes up 60% of the show 
by being funny because he's sleeping well, and eating. Sal, you're saying then so, that Howard is an enabler. That's right. That's exactly saying, what you're saying. I'm not saying that Howard is an enabler, but what, what I, is he? What I'm saying is that him. Howard, as well as us and the audience, find it to be so funny that it's tough to tell him to stop. Dude, that's bullshit. Okay, Artie might use that as a rationale to not, you know, fix his life or get better, but that doesn't make Howard or anyone else that's an bullshit. enabler. What happens when Artie stops falling asleep and stops eating and actually gets in shape? I mean, you're losing a lot of content. Hey, Artie, we had a, that's not true. We had an in shape, uh, not falling asleep Artie on the show, and he was a fucking riot. So what we should do is make a big deal every time he's awake. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> I'm not saying that, but the old school Howard Stern, if you fell asleep on his show, you know believe what? me, he would have cracked the whip. Wait. And it happened to Craig Gass. He fell asleep one time, and, and fucking Howard was livid. And I don't blame him, but with Artie, for some reason, he's so lovable and so funny, no. it actually adds and to it. The difference is Artie's So it's funny. tough. Does anybody remember Craig Gass falling asleep on the show? Yeah. Yeah. And did Howard, Howard get Howard was pissed. Yeah, he off, was. The air, off the air pissed, I think. Oh, really? I don't, see, I don't yeah. even remember that. Yeah. Uh, that's because you're the producer. <laughs> Yeah. I'll remember to fire you, I asshole. I can't remember that one, Bob. That I can remember. <laughs> Ian in Florida, you're on the wrap-up show. Hi, hi, how you doing? Good, Ian. How are you? Not too bad. Um, I was diagnosed last year with sleep apnea. Um, I would fall asleep talking to people right in the middle of a conversation. See, that's an, I'm going to just jump in for a second. That's another one of these illnesses that's being floated out there. And I know a guy with sleep apnea. And that's not the way Artie's falling asleep. Usually... When you have sleep apnea, you fall asleep and then you gasp for air to right. wake up because right. your air right. is up. That's not what's happening with Artie. Artie also said, okay. I think he he claims, I think he said he was tested for it. So. But weight is a huge factor in like when you sleep, you have you snore and you, and and. Sleep but Artie's not snoring. Do you fall asleep during the show? Overnight. No, I'm talking about overnight. But Benji, what'd you start the contest at? What two what weight? Two sixty seven. Oh, two sixty seven. How tall are you? Oh. I uh, five. I say five nine. Five. Right, eight, so nine. you're probably Artie's probably a little bit taller than you. So Artie at two ninety and you at two seventy is not that far off. How come you're oh, not falling asleep? No, but I'm saying when I was up at that max weight, I, I was at when I was at that max weight. Everything, everything is tough. Everything is just like a drag. Like you, like like just just walking to the bathroom is like oh god, I'm, I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> but did you fall asleep on the show? No. Were you close to falling asleep on the show? If I get good sleep, I'm not. But but I'm just saying, like, it, Artie, I've, I've been super fat for much longer than Artie has, so I've adjusted to it more. Artie definitely has a waddle now, too. Like, he yes. doesn't walk normally. It's like... But he's up late, is what I'm saying, because, like, I spoke to him at 11.30 p.m. last night, and I had to be up when you guys were up. I wouldn't be up at 11.30. I'd be well asleep. Like, what time's Howard go to bed? He says 9 o'clock. Well, right? Ar that's another question. Why is Artie up at 11.30? Because I think he slept, slept, slept all afternoon, and then he get up, and then you're screwed. Well, why would you call a guy who has to get up at 4 in the morning? At 11 he called at night. me. He called me. For I what? never call him that late. What do he call you for? Work stuff. Like oh, okay. saying yes to this, yes to this. He's you know rescue me stuff next week. You know. More syrup. Something more syrup. fishy to me. Oh, I right. swear to God, Sal, it was I'm nothing. Like <laughs> Let's talk to John in Miami. John, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah, what I wanted to ask is, um, you guys don't feel like you're enabling Artie. We just had that whole enabling. Yeah, we just talking to you, Sal. Sal totally thinks Howard's enabling Artie. Well, what I you, don't think that at all, you asshole. John, I, no, you, you know what? You I don't. I that's said exactly as a whole. What you said. I said Howard finds it to be extremely entertaining, as well as I and the audience. So it's <laughs> difficult for him to pull back from those things. Sal, say something negative about Howard. Say, what don't you like about Howard? Tell me something you don't like about him. He's getting married. Tell me something else you don't like about him. I don't like that he's not getting married, actually, now that I think about it. I think it'll be good for the future. <laughs> tell me something no, that so you I'm don't like. Tell me something you, you don't know, there's like. There's nothing about I don't like about how exactly. it really isn't. Exactly. But, hey, I'll, 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 I'm just telling it like it is. <laughs> We're all enablers, and Howard's included, so so be it. Thank you, Sal, for One telling thing it like it is. Howard so Howard is an enabler, taught, then, along with all of us. Yes, and is that a bad thing, Gary? I don't know what type of spin you're trying to put on this. Sal, theory, Sal, but, Sal, simple question. Is Howard an enabler? With Artie, or is he not an enabler not. with Artie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question. Can you name something you like about your wife? <laughs> yeah, she's not here right now. <laughs> hey -oh. Actually, somebody, he hung up, but he, he had a good question. <laughs> um, if something happen, tragic happens to Artie, would anybody here feel a sense of responsibility for that? I would. You would? Absolutely. Why? Because I think about it all the time. I really do. I think about it all the time. But what are you supposed to do? I don't know, and that bought, and and that haunts me. I think I I gotta tell you, I think about it all the time. What can I do? Should I be doing something? 
And it makes I think about it all the time. You, I, do, you do too, Jason? I mean, I, I don't think I feel as, as strongly as Gary does because he's closer to Artie than I am. But, I mean, listen, I came on the air here and said what I think, but I don't have the guts to say it to Artie's face. And if anything ever did happen to him, I'd be like, you know, not that it would do anything. Like, I don't think Artie would listen to me if I pulled him aside and said, hey, dude, I, I you know, if anything's wrong with you, I think you should really get some help. But I'd feel guilty if I didn't say anything, and so far I haven't said anything. So, Benj, how about you? I, I, I worry more about someone like Eric the Midget. Like the than Artie. Why? Because like maybe like I think Artie can handle it more. What's going on? Okay. So, well, somebody yesterday told me that we should get the sound of a car screeching to a halt to play when Benji does stuff like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> being, to being, get that sound effect. That well, like, would be good. But I'm being serious. Like, but I do. I mean, I think Artie knows he's super fat. He right. knows he needs to lose weight. He knows like he's in a he's in a potentially dangerous situation. I agree 100% with what Benji just said. It's like, I feel Artie knows, bad, but not responsible. Yeah, Artie can lose weight. He knows what to do. He knows that he's obese at this point, and he's not doing anything to change it. So whose fault is that? That's his. I think Benji just hit the nail on the head, because that's how I feel. I feel bad. I see what's happening with the diabetes and all that stuff, and but it's not my... Right. Like, I can't well, change the you're talking the from the weight thing. If you thought he was on drugs... And then he died of a drug overdose, and you didn't say anything. Would you feel bad? No, I feel bad. But he ultimately he's making that decision. Right. He's a big boy. But what if somebody? Oh, big but boys. what if, do you? Do you I see, I tend to look at somebody who's on drugs as somebody with an illness. Yeah. Would you walk away from a guy with cancer? A guy on drugs is like a guy on cancer. It's an illness. It's an. It, it, I know people tend to think it can be controlled, and like what you know. The, the funniest thing is when people say, "Oh, you're on drugs. Stop doing that." That's what Howard used to say all the time. Don't do drugs. Stop drinking. But I look at it as an illness, and if he were to have, have that illness, I would feel bad for not trying to help him. But there's, a, there's only so much you can do to help someone. So what, are, so what have we done so far? You've, what do you mean? You said, Artie, you've got to lose weight. You're, like, obese at this point. But it's we're not ridiculous. talking about that. We're saying, what if, what if you found out that he He's was, not admitting he has a drug problem. That's the first step right there. I mean, when what he are you going to babysit him all day? When he came out and talked about being on heroin back in the terrestrial radio days, like, everybody, you know, comforted him and tried to help him and, and was there for him. You know what I mean? Like, like you can't force the guy to do it. He's got to do it. J.D., what would you do? Do you feel? Would you feel a sense of responsibility? No. Thank I hardly talk to him. <laughs> you guys want to feel guilty at all? Just a little bit. I'm not saying you have to what ruin I, your life over it. Do? What do I have to feel guilty for? The, I don't know. The, the main friend. interaction I have with him is on the air, and it's basically him making fun of me. So what the hell do I have to? All right. So you don't care. About I, him, is what no, saying. I care about him, but I mean, I, and I would be sad if he died, but I would feel no responsibility whatsoever. What's the difference between feeling responsible and feeling a little bit guilty? Would you, if you think somebody has a problem, or guilty and you don't, either. If you think someone has a problem and you don't say anything, then I don't know. To me, to me. So why don't you say something to him? Jason? I mean, I don't know I'm a pussy. I don't know. I I am. I came. I, listen, I came on here and said exactly what I wanted to say to his face about 20 minutes ago that, that I didn't. Okay. So. I really don't think you give a shit if Jason said that. Of course not. That's the other thing. I don't yeah. think you give a shit either what I had to say. I <laughs> I don't give a shit what Jason's saying right now. <laughs> exactly. hey, Go ahead, I really do think. I mean, you guys said a joke about fat. You said a joke about fat camp, but that's the thing I think could make a huge difference. If if we if Gary Howard said to Artie, listen, we want you to go to a month to some fat rehab place. And really try to lose weight. I think that could really help. Why are you laughing, Will? It's just like fat rehab. Give me a break. If you it's don't like want, if you want to lose weight, don't eat and exercise. But it's, it's like yeah, going to rehab for to a pot. Certain, when you get to a certain point, it's tremendously difficult. Yeah, some people can't do that. And he ate a pound of French toast this morning. Just, just him hold losing. on, hold on. This is Artie Lang, not Walter Hudson. It's three hundred pounds, not eight hundred pounds. <laughs> but I think something like that would get him. Like if we, if everything was about him losing weight for like a month. I think that would really get. But see, started. I think that that doesn't work either because it's so dramatic that you know that month is so dramatic and then you lose the weight, but you're probably not losing it in a fashion that you should lose it. It's you know it should be a slow weight loss, not this dramatic 30 day thing. And I think dramatic helps a lot for some people because it inspires you to do, to change your lifestyle for a longer time. All right, we got to take a break, guys. When we come back, we haven't talked about Scott the engineer being at the bottom of the invitation list. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll stop by and chime in. Plus. We'll continue this conversation about Artie and having an intervention without him here or listening to it and see uh, where that gets us. You're listening to the wrap-up show only on Howard 100 and Howard 101. All right, we only have a couple minutes left. Ralph, I want your take on Artie because I know you've had theories all along. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I've been right all along. and But I, I actually think he, he, uh, Sal is right. You, everybody is enabling him. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's funny for the show, and that's the problem. I mean, it's like... You know, on the one hand, it's like if, you, if you're fixing Gary the retard's teeth or, or fixing John the stutterer stutter. I mean, that, that makes him interesting to the show. But, but you know, the guy is obviously he's got problems, and they're all funny on the show, and that's the problem. Okay, Ralph, let me play devil's advocate, right? 
Say I'm I'm Artie's say I'm Howard, I'm Artie's employer. Mm. Has Artie missed work? Yes. How many but but, but how many times? Is has Artie chronically I, I missed think, work? I think he's missed work enough to to to, to well, what's enough? the problem. He falls asleep during the show. He, he falls asleep on the couch. I mean, there's something wrong. He can't handle. He shows up to work every day. Oh, get oh, come on, Gary. You can't make an argument that he Gary, has come on. A, like a great work ethic. Gary, if but he, what's a work ethic? Dude, if, he, he wor- good, sorry. if he worked on a construction site and wandered off for 30 minutes in the middle of work, he probably but, would have been fired. But this nobody, isn't a construction nobody, site. Nobody, Let's be honest. Put, okay, but. Nobody but see, puts all their foot down and says this is unacceptable. And also, but, the weight, the weight, he is killing himself. No, you with can't that sit down so, and tell a guy his weight is unacceptable. So wait, Ralph, so you think Howard should say, Artie, enough. And lay down the law, like Sal was saying before. No, I'm, I didn't say that. No, no, Howard, I'm asking Ralph, not you. I know, but I, Howard shouldn't say it. Already knows. I mean, that's basically. I mean, Listen, that's you, not can't, what you can't help somebody who won't help themselves. Right. What I'm saying right. is, when you get a pass on all these things, why? Why would he change his behavior? There's no consequence to his behavior. No negative consequence except feeding into killing himself, which is which clearly he wants to do. Never it's self-destructive behavior. I mean, if I, like like uh, like like Sal said, if Howard said, "Hey, listen, this isn't acceptable. I, I can't have you falling asleep during the news or, or or disappearing for 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 a half an hour or something. I need somebody here who I can count on." And uh, and Artie is just as funny, uh, lighter or heavier. I mean, he's, he's just a funny guy. I agree. I mean, it's funny when he eats those donuts and shovels in the mouth. He's talking, but. You know, is it funny for him to die? No, that's not funny. Look, the, the, I, the laughter is going to come to an end real soon. I think everybody agrees with what Ralph is saying here, but my question is still, so what do you do? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is to be done? I think, like, uh, that movie he studio respect, head. With, I, I, he respects Howard, and Howard, I think Howard should pull him aside and have a talk with him. Real quick, Jace. I think, like, that movie studio head with Lindsay Lohan, Howard should take out an open letter in the New York Times uh, explaining think, to Artie what his problems are. I think the bigger problem is Gary has a bigger problem. That's the newsrooms now waiting to see who's invited to cover this party. Oh, oh God. Yeah, there's, there, there's a bastion of exciting you know, people. John, uh, I, want, <laughs> John I, just, I think the only way Artie Lang is going to clean up is when he leaves the show because he'll be in an acting position where he won't be obligated to be the fat, funny, sleepy sap. Yeah, and, five okay. seconds. What do you do? I don't know what to do, but I've been thinking about it for a while, and something's got something's to happen soon. All right, thanks for listening to the wrap-up show, which you hear only on Howard 100. And Howard... Good morning. Say good night. All right, all right. Let me just say one last point. If you wanted to make a party, make a party. Give her cash. <laughs> if I invited a party, nobody would come. Hey, by the way, the guys were telling me that um, when Artie had the original risotto dish, which was wonderful, but a little on the small side, he ordered... I guess he ordered more, no. and I don't know what he told him to I bring out. I didn't order more. No, here's what they happened. They said they Dominic, the... Dominic goes, I'll pay $100 if you bring him a double order of risotto. I didn't order any more. And he always does. I see. <laughs> he had to embarrass Artie. Because the guy said they brought out the, of his day. the biggest bowl they'd ever seen. So before you and all the little bitches back there yell at me for eating, Dominic brought it. <laughs> I wish. I I'm wish. not bitches. What are you doing? Why are you calling us bitches? No, he met me guys. and Will and Jason. Uh, I I wish, uh, believe me, I wish Dominic would have ordered me a double portion of risotto. I know. That was risotto. Jason's on the wrap-up show saying he thought I was on drugs because I fell asleep after the show while talking to him. Uh, let me tell Jason, you're not exactly like talking to a young Tony Robbins. All right? I don't know if everybody else in your life, Jason, does cartwheels after a five-hour radio show while talking to your exciting fat ass. How do they keep their eyes yeah, open? I'm not one of them. All of a sudden, yeah. Jason's Mr. Cool. This, this, this nerdy virgin, <laughs> this nerdy, hairy virgin that we hired is Fonzie on the wrap-up show, thinking I'm on drugs. All your drug-related past faggot friends from wherever you grew up in <laughs> Southern California, you hairy faggot. Are you mad at that wrap-up show stuff? Uh, yeah, I'm mad at what Jason said. I think I was on drugs. He was falling asleep while he was talking to me. No one falls asleep when I'm. No one falls asleep when I'm talking. You nerdy virgin, hairy fag. Call him a rude little pig. I hate him. I know uh, my jokes were terrible, but when <laughs> Artie's, uh, when that lady said about the two fat guys not the, married yet, Sheila, yeah, engaged, yeah, she was funny. She was hysterical. Leslie had the best line of all. She said, and I'm marrying the fat, sweaty guy. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if that was the best all line right, of all. What, what is it, Jason? Now, listen, first of all, I didn't say you were falling asleep. I said that you looked out of it, and you did, and I'm not the only one who said it. Gary said it, and a bunch of other people said it. So if you want to come down on me, I wasn't... I'm coming down on you. Go because, ahead. Because you said, well, I think I just did.
Yeah, I mean, all I said was, dude, you looked out of it. You didn't look the same as before when you left the studio mysteriously for a half hour, and I was worried about you. And you weren't worried about me. You want to be, oh, inter- really? you want to be interesting on the wrap-up yes, show. Yes, I'm so. always running down to the wrap-up show to be interesting. <laughs> That's all I hear is every one of you motherfuckers are around like little wolves over there. All right, so you know what? Fuck you, then. I don't care. Good, come come good, on any stay you good, want. Good, I don't good, give a good. shit. I saw I'm you not... look. I mean, I saw you. I was worried. Sorry, dude. You know, whatever. So fuck it. Do whatever you want. Take I don't give a shit. Take your nerdy virgin ass back to the computer and type like a broad. Okay. <laughs> Shove another fucking cupcake down your mouth, you fat fuck. Yeah. Whoa! Uh, All right. And well. You, well, why don't you come down on Gag Gary? He said the same freaking thing. What? Uh, oh, it's, not, it's not him? I didn't he's... hear that part. I didn't hear the whole yeah, thing. Okay. All right. Call him a rude little pig again. That's yeah. the Alec Baldwin line. You're a rude little pig. <laughs> and he's coming to straighten your ass yeah. out. Listen, I'm going to defend Artie for one thing here. You know, I walk out of here after a five-hour show. I'm unconscious. You would think I was on heroin mm-hmm. when I let when I leave here. I'm, I'm and then out when, of it. But when Jason talks to you, you perk right up, though, right? No, as a matter of fact, Have I've made a rule. Have you ever fallen asleep on Jason? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I've made a rule. <laughs> I literally. This little nerd who can't throw a ball tries to talk to me about the Yankees. Jesus Christ! <sighs> shut the fuck up. As soon as the show is over, I go. I, I go meditate. I got to go pass out for a few minutes because yeah. I'm. So but it wasn't, amazing. dude. It wasn't that. Everyone heard it in the office when he came out. Look, I'm sure he's fine. But I I'm not the only one drunk. saying it. It had nothing to do. I think uh, he had not totally to do with the conversation I had with Artie off the air. Tell me in person if you're so worried. Don't tell it on the right. I did. I said I was a pussy for not saying something new in person. Well, okay, so you're making my point. <laughs> <laughs> an idiot. Uh, Dominic, thank you. Uh, whatever. Uh, listen, uh, we're going to uh, let me listen to the. Go in an argument with Scott the Page. You're outnumbered here. Here's what happened on the uh, wrap-up show. This is what the guys are arguing about. Uh, and I was called an enabler, by the way, which I did. Oh, really? Well, no, Sal said you act like an enabler, but we tried to get him to say that you were one. He could never say anything negative. You just act it. like one. You yeah. may not be one. No, no, how does do like anything wrong? All right, here's an already speculation. What was the deal during the gossip game? Like, where he I, went, went down to Metro? or These are all the people that care I, about I thought me. that was a very thin explanation. I'll be re- really upfront. I love Artie to death, but he claims he sat down for 15 seconds, but he was gone for a very a much longer time. Like so if all he did was sit down for 15 seconds and get back up, it doesn't make sense why he was. He missed the gossip game. But even yesterday, when he was out game. you know, grazing the cupcakes, he knew we were on the air, but he seemed in no rush to get back. Listen, I'm going to come right out and say it. I really think Artie might be back on something. I mean, no Artie, shit. Artie came Thank back you, a different person than when he left. I mean, when he came back on the air, that wasn't the Artie that was on the air at 7 o'clock in the morning. This was some new, <laughs> low-key, <laughs> low-talking, kind of uh, spacey Artie. Hat over the eyes. Yeah, I, I, even after the show, I was Indeed. talking to him. And he, he was the same as he was on the air, which was kind of not there. Sal, you agree? I hate to say it. I love Artie so much, and he's, he's the greatest guy ever on the show. And uh, if he, he's mad at me, he's mad at me. I think he's on drugs. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, that's it. Thanks and, for helping uh, he my life. Help. Well, the boys were saying uh, they had all kinds of speculation. So and my mother happened. called me crying. She did. She heard the rap. Really? Oh, She's like, I mean, you know, I mean. Oh, sorry. Well, Sorry about that. <laughs> what, I mean, like, like what we do on the air is goofing around. You know what I mean? And uh, well, you were but, there to but on the right, I mean, don't see these guys. Here's the difference: when you do it, and Fred does it, you guys are funny. You're comedians. These guys can't be funny, so they have to go. It takes he's on, on drugs. It takes on more serious. Yeah, because they're, they're not like, funny people. It sounds like me for some re- Right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, it sounds like the not funny report. people talking. John Hine. What happened during the gossip game, Gar? Mm-hmm. Well, he missed the gossip game. Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't want to be a bummer. Can I say something The, the wrap-up show is not always meant to be funny. The wrap-up show is... You're, you're, you're hitting that goal, guys. It, <laughs> it is a discussion <laughs> and a dice... It is a discussion and a dissection of what happened you're on doing the show. a bang-up job of it. It was it post There are days when you sit in there... And you're that same person about other people. Like what? Name one where I, I accuse somebody of something that heavy, man. That's a heavy thing. Right now, I, I have stuff going on in my career. I don't need people uh, telling in a non-humorous way that I might be on drugs. Well, you did accuse me of not knowing any black people. Well, geez, that's the truth. <laughs> That was serious. <laughs> Look, it hit me the wrong way. I take a lot of shit around here, and it's fine because I give out shit, but that hit me the wrong way when I heard that. Well, I was called an enabler. So Where, where's that? I I'll play you that. I don't want to say that Howard's an enabler because he's not, but, but he the is. truth of the matter is if Howard ever took Artie aside and said, Look, don't fucking fall asleep on my show. It offends me. 
Artie would never fall asleep again. But no, no, when no, no, everybody no. Artie does hold what Artie on, wants on, to wait do. A minute. Yeah, I don't agree with but that. But when everybody's <laughs> giggling and turns it into a 25-minute segment on Artie falling asleep again, it kind of, in the back of his mind, says, hey, you know what? I can roll with this. You know, when Howard spends 25 minutes on Artie's pancakes, it's always funny. So, again, I think Artie's saying, what the fuck? They love when I eat. They love when I sleep. You're asking this guy to change, yet he makes up 60% of the show by being funny because he's sleeping well, and eating. Sal, you're saying then so, that Howard is an enabler. That's right. That's exactly saying, what you're saying. I'm not saying that Howard is an enabler. but what, what is he? Howard, as well as us and the audience, find it to be so funny that it's tough to tell him to stop. All right, now I took but what huge... is he enabling? Are he sleeping? Seriously. I mean, what, he's what allowing he? me to Artie... eat. What do you want him to do? So I, I tackle mean, me on my way to the deli? I mean, so Artie is eating to entertain me. Is that the <laughs> enabling part of this? Listen, Listen Artie's eating way. Ninety-nine percent of his eating goes on outside of the studio. Uh, but what are you sound? enabling exactly? Right. That's what I mean. It started off as a, a drug conversation, and now Sal's calling you an enabler because Listen, you it makes it sound like I'm sitting back here. To fall I'm sitting back here with a credit card, cutting up lines. <laughs> Artie comes in every day. <laughs> Artie comes I'm, in. I'm eating French toast. I mean, I'm a fat guy. You know, well, I'm a second. fat guy. Artie comes in every day. Uh, unlike uh, most fat people, Artie is willing to eat in front of people. Right. He could sit here and pretend that he only eats an apple in the morning. I mean, he doesn't. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, I looked over at six o'clock this morning when you opened the mics. Artie was chewing. Artie starts the show by chewing. <laughs> it's almost like our natural anthem. Sal did a Sal did make a point in that I know you don't love when people eat on the show, but it is it is something you get a bit out of. So you know, you know in my head, I'm more relaxed about it. That is a good point, but. I, look, I just took offense to the fact that people in a very serious tone, without claim they care about me, but instead of saying it off the air, to be compelling on the wrap-up show, go, okay, Artie's on drugs. But they did make a good point. You were wearing a hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what? You know what? One of, the, one of the things they brought up that I, I mean that gets back to my mother. She hears that shit. It's not goofing around. She's like, you know, these guys they work with you. You must be on drugs, Jason. Oh. You were talking they to Jason no and you fell asleep. Concrete evidence. <laughs> Look, I'm here's the falling thing. asleep while I'm talking to Jason. Here's the thing. I don't know whether you're on drugs or not. I take you at face value. When you say to me you're not, I believe you. It's my own fault because uh, I've done a lot sense. of drugs in my life and I've and it's fucked up a lot of things in my life. Right now, I am not. On any drugs. Right. And the fact is, yes. Now, what does that mean, Jason? No. It means, it means now, later. You think he's lying right now? It means later to that. Well, you do. You think he's lying right now? I think now. it's a, a strong possibility he is. And I'd like to apologize to Mrs. Lang also. I didn't mean to say you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're high. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lang. I'm very sorry. I, I, I didn't think about that. What do you think that. I'm on right now? I don't know, dude, but listen, <laughs> you were fine yet, you were fine the other day, you disappeared for a half hour, you faint on the escalator, some random guy had to... It wasn't half an hour, it wasn't Yeah, it was. Some random guy had half an hour. Okay, 20 minutes. It was 20 minutes. <laughs> Some random guy walking through the building had to sit you down and make sure you're okay, and then you come back up and I'm, you I'm look like a different pounds. Person. There's plenty of 300 pound people that are not falling asleep on the elephant. You'll be, you'll be one of them in two months. Yeah, okay. I have to, in Artie's defense. You get mad at me because I could die it. In Artie's defense, at the party, I fell over standing still. Yeah, of course. We're all not I'm to me. exhausted. Listen to me. Everybody's constitution is different. It doesn't shock me that Artie sit down because the guy loads up on carbs all morning. Right. That's and he a, crashes that's from the and sugar. He crashes yeah. on sugar. Now, I'm not defending. Listen, I don't know if Artie's on drugs or not. I just believe the guy when he says he's not on drugs. You know, if you really it. think that, put your money where your mouth is. Have this intervention you talk about and send me away for a month. Oh, you would <laughs> love that. We're not doing I wouldn't love going anywhere. <laughs> I hey, Alan, <laughs> one of the points that the guys were making that I didn't remember. They were saying, you know, how Artie fell asleep, and you think it's funny. And I didn't remember this, but they were telling me that Craig Gass was on the show once, and he fell asleep during the show. I remember he fell asleep, but I don't know. And I they know said you got that mad. afterwards, you, you were, like, furious with him. Right. Craig's not funny when he falls asleep. <laughs> well, I mean. you got to be a real fat guy to be funny when he falls Artie sleeps funny. <laughs> I mean, anything um, I would do now is funny because I'm enormous. <laughs> Well, anyway, people are concerned about you being enormous in the email. They're like, you know, Artie, you got to get Artie to lose weight and this and that. And people contact me that i got to get Artie to do this. Now, stuff. how are you going to do that, Howard? You've no. been set this task. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> I mean, Artie's got to want to do it. If Artie came to me and said, I want to do that, I would, I'd be the first one to help him. But, uh, really? By doing I mean, what? Throwing the how medicine ball? You help him? I, I, I would, I would get, get, buy him a book, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if he ate the book, I don't know. I've dieted I do. before. I know how to do it. I just got to yeah. want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. What am I saying? I mean, I do to want do? to, but I mean, I'm admitting I'm weak. I, I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> Should I handcuff him during this? I show? may continue to eat. <laughs> He's hungry. Uh, Howard, you're on the air in Jersey City, New Jersey. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. 
You know, uh, talking about this Alec Baldwin thing, Dominic, the uh, semi-bloated attorney, the guy's yeah. 100% right. Yes. I mean, the thing is, you see something. I am not defending Kim Bassinger. I am not here to attack Alec Baldwin. The fact of the matter is there is now a tape that exists and a transcript of how he spoke to his daughter. And no matter how bad things get as a parent, you cannot do that. You can't call your kid those names. Now, I know people lose it, and I know things, you, you say stuff, I've said stuff to my kids, I wish, you know, I could have worded things differently or been a different way. But at the very, th there are certain overt behaviors that as an adult you have to learn to control. And if you can't control them, you, a, a guy with his means and money really should devote a couple hours a week to going to a shrink and working on himself so he can have a better relationship with his kid. Forget Kim Bassinger. She might be the biggest mental case on the planet, and he might be exa exasperated from, is that the right word? Exas yeah. Exasperated from dealing with her. All of those things might be true. But you can't call your daughter a dirty little pig, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to come out there and teach you a lesson. I mean, those are threats. Oh, no, that ain't going to win his kid over. Do you think he over. meant physical stuff? Do you no. think the problem is I you don't, don't so. know. You don't know. And the way the, he's uh, talking? You know, the only thing I can tell you is that everybody says w he's only verbally uh, uh, abusive. Uh. But, you know, uh, you could read that anyway. Listen, I'm I, the same I, way. I And women have said this about me, and it, it's uh, I, I, in a relationship. I, it happened. It just happened right now. I can't control my temper either, and I'm a very... Oh, we've seen you when Artie has to do what Artie has no, to do. No, but I say I'm a very verbally abusive person, too. But I'm not... I, I would never hit somebody, especially mm -hmm. a woman. And... um I think he feels ganged up by women maybe sometimes. Guys are like that, especially macho guys. And he's like, he looks at his daughter as maybe another one of these women who's going to grow up and well, hate me and I'm going to hate her first. And... He's looking for his kid to worship him yeah. right? and, uh, and to, to sit at his altar and, and, and praise him. Look, he's got a lot of people kissing his ass in his life, and his daughter isn't one of those people that has that obligation. She wasn't there for whatever reason, whether she wants to be there or not, and he's got to accept it. And he's got to be a big boy and say, hang up the phone and say, gee, when I get out there, I'm going to ask her why she's not taking my calls. It's or important. have the visit on the phone. Right. Tell the daughter, you know, what you were planning to say to her anyway. Right. But so he yelled at his daughter. Why are we so soft all the time? No, no, no. This isn't about soft. That's a little. That's a. Howard, no. I get you. I, I think. I think kids are coddled too much today, too. But that, you know, that was really over the top. Artie, your father said you swung like a cunt. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's the, he's calling her a worthless piece of shit pig. So I mean, that is, Howard, my God, you don't see where that's a little over the top, Howard? Come on. It, the it, one line that I think is the worst out of all of it is you don't have the brains or the decency as a human being. Right. right. I think that is the worst thing a father could say to his own daughter. Look, sorry. I, you know, no excuse. I, I listen. My old man used to lose his temper with me all the time and tell me I was no, I had no brains. Told me I never amount to anything. Told me, and, and I'm going to tell you something. It's very crushing. You believe? You, him. We've heard the tapes. It's the, it's the similar situation. That's why you're in therapy. You, you're goddamn right. Uh, but you uh, but, know but what? But the, the fact of the matter is, um, uh, you know, I. I, you know, I have very loving feelings for my father. I'm sure this girl does too. And he is not getting the message that. Let's see, uh, Yankee pitcher four consecutive home runs he allowed. I can't baseball right Chase. now. I can't even talk about it. It's so frustrating. The Yankees are eight and nine. They got swept. It started out By great, didn't Boston, they? Boston, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, hey, uh, A Rod's having a great year, but the Yankees aren't. They can't get a, you know. They can't get together. Well, he was he won the MVP a couple of years ago, but the problem is in October when you need hits, he's never been clutch, and that's all Yankee fans care about. But this year is going to be frustrating, man. The pitching is awful, and. They're eight and nine, and they just got swept by the Bo Sox. But the craziest baseball story is Barry Bonds right now. He, he hit a 740th home run. He's 15 away from Hank Aaron. Who I growing up, I loved Hank Aaron. The first book I ever read was the Hank Aaron story. I did like eight book reports on it over my school years, and and he was a guy you rooted for. And it would be such an exciting time right now in baseball if he didn't have this much shit hanging over his head. Right. I mean, he's that about clouds the, everything. The all-time home run record is. Without question, the most coveted record in sports. That's worldwide. 714 Babe Ruth, when Aaron broke it, it was insanity. And now he's going to break it this year. And it's like no one gives a shit. And 
you know, outside of San Francisco, you can't get into it. And I hate that. I feel robbed of that. I would be so into it right now. Uh, ESPN did a great thing when Mark McGuire broke Maris' record, and uh, Sosa was up there, too. No matter what ESPN had on, it could have tennis or whatever. If somewhere in the country McGuire was up to possibly break the record, they'd break in live. And that's what they're going to do probably with Barry Bonds. But it seems like nobody cares cause he's, because of the steroid thing. All the craziness, and he seems like a liar and a shithead. It's, a, it's the steroid thing that turns Absolutely. people off. And, but, and it's a scandal that, that really shows a lot of his character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know him personally, but what you read in the paper does not make him look like a good person. Let's go to Mark who wants to say hi in in uh, D.C., then we'll get to Robin's News, and uh, Steve's going to come in, and so is John with an update. Go ahead, Mark. How you doing, Howard? How you doing? Hey, now. Hey, now. I've been listening for a lot of years. I'm the therapist that helped you realize that Cabby was lying about his hallucination before he went to jail. I just wanted to say hello to everybody. I didn't want to take up a lot of your time, but I, w I need Artie to, when he gets a second, give me a call. I like his personal experiences with Stephanie Tex. For me personally and for some other people that are interested in that drug. Noon and Can I uh, be taken off the air and just give you my number? No, stop it. I'm not going to call you off the air. Talk about subutex. Stop the nonsense. What's the matter with you? Want to call off the air from Artie to talk about talk about it on the air? Dude, he I helped us realize that Cabby's rants mm. were uh, no. not real. Well, I, I almost know. hung up after that. Yeah. What does he have? Hearing? <laughs> uh, by the way, dude, there's nothing to talk oh, about. God. It's a miracle drug. If you're addicted to opiates, go get Subutex and learn how to use it properly. It's amazing. Yeah, for example, Artie just got upset and popped his Subutex. I mean, in a way, it's for weak people. I have no willpower now. I couldn't get high if I wanted to. It's like a great thing. Just put it in there and like fuck. You know, when you got angry with Jason, you mean to tell me there was something inside of you said I need heroin? When I'm uh, when I lose it like that, and right. really, I'm gonna hate to hear the replay of that because Jason's a good kid, and I said awful things. <laughs> you're you're Alec Baldwin. I did. I said really <laughs> rude things, but I was mad. You know, I mean, I thought it was kind of bullshit. You know, saying it on the air. Tell me off the air. It's kind of a fucked up accusation. But when I get mad, yeah, I tend to get like fuck it, fuck everybody, fuck it. I want to get fucked up, and if. Mm. In now, that moment, I pop one and boom. So when you called him a hairy fag, <laughs> would you say then you needed the heroin? I think it was when I called him a nerdy virgin hairy fag. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys make up at He's all? He's got a lovely you... girlfriend. He's very nice. Did you talk to him off the we air? We did. I apologized. I extended the... Did you fall there. asleep during the apology? <laughs> no, no, it was a very exciting conversation. <laughs> and, all right. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's that. I had my first uh, session with uh, Chris Canyon, the wrestler, last night, by the way. Oh, oh did you? We How'd that a, go? We talked for an hour on the phone. We had a long talk. He's a great guy, and uh, I shared with now, him. Now, at the end of this, will Artie be, uh, will uh, Chris be less depressed, or will Artie be gay? He felt, oh, my God. God, I hope the former is the case. I, uh, Chris no. Canyon is a, he used to be a wrestler. Gay he wrestler uh, came, is out. Gay, came out as a gay guy. He, he said he's been trying to commit suicide, and Artie said he was going to help him. <laughs> we all had a good laugh, but yet Artie swears he could help him. So you had an hour phone conversation. Pretty much, yeah. He called me. Now, and... what, now did you find that uh, after speaking with him that you saved him in a sense, that no, he no, now no. got this great inspiration? I think we had a good first session, Howard, certainly. I you say he... you revealed some things to him? I told him some things that uh, I experienced from having uh, bouts with depression that I think he related to and helped him a bit, I think, yeah. And you think merely by hearing your depression, he will somehow feel not alone? Well, the biggest thing is that, that your path... Are we sure this is for Chris or does Artie need someone Sounds like Artie needed to. someone it to do I enjoy it. You're right, Rob, because I enjoy talking about it. It's like therapy for me. But what helped me the most in rehab and the depression that came after getting off drugs was hearing... Because the first thing you think is, I'm the only person in the world that has this problem. I'm a loser. I'm an asshole. I'm an idiot. And you feel very lonely. And you mm -hmm. isolate yourself. What helped me the most was being in a group therapy, hearing everybody else's situation, and knowing you're not alone. But most of all, some uh, brilliant people in history who have gone through the same thing. And I just know it from... I said, like, pick, it up, pick a brilliant American writer 
Eugene O'Neill, Edgar Allan Poe, Hemingway, Hemingway F. Yeah. Scott Fitzgerald, Hunter S. Thompson just blew his fucking head off. They're all depressed, sort of. So what is your point? My point is that brilliant people go through this and He's a wrestler. He's a wrestler, Artie. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to write anything. Really? Well, no, no. I mean, well, you never know. He may. He Listen, may. So he has other... Are you telling him he's not a wrestler, he's a writer? So when you're in to... the company of people So who... he is supposed to feel better because he's depressed and other pe famous people were depressed? No. No, no, not just famous people, but a lot of people in general. You don't feel alone. I, like, see. I mean, you know. So that is your strategy in helping Chris Kent. You, you it, know, I just received me. an email that he jumped out a window after he spoke to you. <laughs> because that's what right helped. Out. That's what helped me hearing about. Other... A lot of the people who I admired that went through the same thing. And what it shows you is, well, clearly you can get through it and everything will be fine. Okay. That's what it shows. Mm -hmm. what I can show you a bunch of people who didn't make it. Hemingway. Hey, well, I don't can't... they kill themselves, some of those I people? I tend not to bring up those people. <laughs> well, you're smart. Ralph, go ahead. You're uh, on Hemingway the blew his head off. And people don't realize this, that Hunter S. Thompson, I think... Uh, out in Colorado, I think Hemingway was in Idaho. He did it at the same exact age. I think he was yeah. trying to be Hemingway till the uh, end there. Blow his fucking hey, brains out. Hey, I'm watching CNN. Who's this guy, Chris Canyon, who killed himself? Like? <laughs> <laughs> All right, calm down. All right, what do you want, Ralph? Hey now, hey, what's this Alec Baldwin thing, man? It sounds great. You got to play it. Well, it is. It is great in the sense that it's great radio. We played it this morning. You didn't hear it, Ralph, it's on a, the news? It's very disturbing. I don't know anything about it. He, he, well, I'm not going to go back into it. Why don't you listen? It's probably, in fact, I see here it's 1016, so it's probably being played right now on... Uh... It's 1016 already? Wow. Yeah, we've got to wrap you gotta up. you got to play it. It sounds good. Why wouldn't you play it? We it played sounds... it, I said. You, just because you weren't awake. Well, you were going to play it again, and yeah, you talked you yourself out yourself. of it. Well, because, I mean, it's a very disturbing call. You'll hear it in an hour. Yeah, what did he very... know? Who did he call? He called his, his daughter. daughter. And his daughter released this great... No, event. his ex-wife, Kim Basinger, who is a complete fucking idiot, who uh, should never release this. This is an embarrassment to the daughter. They're both acting juvenile. Oh, she's trying to prove what an asshole Yeah, Alec but it only proves what an asshole she is, and, and, and also makes Alec a, an asshole as well. There's I mean, the irony. Well, do you want me to play it again or yes. not? Not yes. you, yes. Robin. I do. You do. Why? Ooh. Because it's out there, we are not the only way to get it, it's news. And we played it already. All right, I just find it very disturbing, I'll play it, maybe I'm being overly sensitive here, but uh, this kid... <laughs> <laughs> It yeah, is. I mean, think it about is. it, Kim Basinger. You put that out, so, of course, now your daughter can hear Ralph giggling in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Sal and Richard are in the back working on making phony phone calls with her. Right? Yeah, how are we doing with that? Yeah, like, have we got along. anything? That I have to By do. the way, I heard a little bit of Super Fan mm -hmm. Roundtable, uh, which was very good, and Mupp brought up an interesting point. Is it too fucked up or soon for Sal and Richard to use the Virginia Tech guy's Videotape for phone uh, to phone. I say yes. I say you say Eddie, can do it. No, no, can't do it. Can't do it. I'll it's tell you why. Oh, it's why too soon. No, I'll tell you why. Now this wait a minute. Did they ask you and did you say this to them? No, oh, I'm okay. telling you my answer right now. I wouldn't play it because I'm surprised they haven't tried. Already. This is so heinous. Right. What this guy did in Virginia, and really, even putting his tapes on the air give other lunatics uh, the. It gives them the M.O., the, the, the prescription yeah. for how to do this. Stuff. Now, ask me that in June. That's a different story. But no, but in all seriousness. Is this I, an R. Bud Dwyer type situation where it just should be buried? No. no? This is different. R. Bud Dwyer killed himself. No, but I'm just saying it's such a horrible thing you can't really look at. It. No, this is horrible because uh, this guy went and killed 40 innocent people, and uh, it's too painful, I think. You know, on the Super There's Fan Roundtable, they had. No I way. Think, no. Mutt and. Two of the other guys, and Joey Boots, they all were like, fuck it, use it. you got to do no, it right away. No, the girl, I don't know who the girl was, says it's too soon. I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't be comfortable with it. There's nothing to laugh about. I mean, that guy's sickening. Just, I don't even like hearing that guy's voice. I wouldn't be able to cut the, his voice up and yeah. use it. For well, don't uh, get a conscience with Alec Baldwin. I'll go back there and work. Okay, we're it's working on that right yeah. now. Yeah, I you were almost getting it. And I have, gra I have great audio. Of, uh, we have great audio of Scott the Engineer yelling this morning, too. Oh, oh great. Yeah. Oh, good. You know what? Want to hear that. Not not that I want you to do this, but my rant that Jason might make for a good funny phone call to a gay bar. <laughs> okay, well, that is that pretty too. good. All right, there you go. Ralphie, uh, there's your tape. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And effort. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, I know a lot of people are sitting there going, well, gee, my dad called me a lot worse things, and I'm fine.
Oh. Round table, they had... No I way. Think, uh, yeah. Not not that I want you to do this, but my rant that Jason might make for a good phony phone call to a gay bar. <laughs> okay, we're yeah, on that is pretty thing. good. All right, there you go. Ralphie, uh, there's your tape. Um, thank um, you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And effort. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people are sitting there going, well, gee, my dad called me a lot worse things, and I'm fine. But what, that don't make it right. And also, I want to get something straight. My father said to somebody else that I was swinging like a cunt within my earshot, okay? <laughs> the man so was, that makes it better? The man was not an ogre, and in this particular case, I swung like a cunt, and he was surprised because I usually had the swing of a young Greg Nettle. Hey, there's a piece of tape I want to hear. Uh, this was uh, from the wrap-up show. Gary said he feels responsible for Artie. I just want to make sure I hear that. Responsible? Yeah, I, I want to hear this because I, I never got to hear it, and this I know the show, the show will end, and uh, I won't get to hear this. If something tragic happens, happens to Artie, would anybody here feel a sense of responsibility for that? I would. You would? Absolutely. Why? Because I think about it all the time. I really do. I think about it all the time. Well, what are you really? supposed to do? I don't know, and that, bought, and, and that haunts me. J.D., what would you do? do you feel, would you feel a sense of responsibility? No. Thank I you. hardly talk to him. <laughs> you guys no. want to feel guilty at all? Just a little bit. I'm not saying you have to ruin your life over feel, it. What do I have to feel guilty for? The, 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 the main friend. interaction I have with him is on the air, and it's basically him making fun of me. So what the hell do I have to... All right, so you don't care about him. Uh, no, I care about him, but I mean, I, and I would be sad if he died, but I would feel no responsibility whatsoever. You know, uh, to tell you the truth, if it isn't at least once a week, Gary calls me and sits me down or something and says, listen... Can you can you talk to me about Artie? No, yeah. once You're a kidding. week? Are You're you kidding. serious? I'm exaggerating, but but he has called me from time to time. That's surprising that he he thinks about it that much. First of all, look, I am seriously uh, touched by that in a way, but I can't believe that. I mean, I mean, well, if you want to hear the I rest, be calling? I don't know. No, am no. I going to look Gary, like a... you you will probably look bad in all this, but <laughs> Gary and I have regular discussions about Artie. Well, I'm alive for the uh, record, guys. It's, uh, don't feel guilty. It's none of your faults. And I've said to Gary, what are you doing? Why are you absolving us? Tell us nothing. Is going to happen. I could have a heart attack at any moment. Well, I'm not going to feel guilty about that. I said to Gary, look. <laughs> Thank you. I said, Gary, I don't know what to tell you to do, and I don't know what to do either. I said, I feel... There's nothing to do. What are you exactly. going to do? I said... Listen, if I called you up one day and said, I seriously got to go away and get myself right. Now, if if I need a month or two to do that and you got to move on, that's my problem. It's my life. I fucked it up. Uh, but this has to happen no matter what. Exactly right. I said to Gary, I said, Gary, And if listen, you say no Artie, at that point, then maybe, you know, what the Then fuck maybe I'm responsible. But who knows? But not even then. It's like you're my employer. Because you could always leave anyway. That's right. Well, yeah, what are you I, do? I said to Gary, I said, look, I said, Gary, Artie is a grown man. I respect Artie. I said, I have privately, as a friend, said some things to Artie. I said, but listen, it's up to Artie if he. I can't force Artie to go to. I mean, Does I said, Artie what need is it? to go away? Is that what Artie is saying? Well, as an no. as an employer, it, that's you could what... technically say, I want you to go away. I'm that's true. Your job. But I mean, you're doing no. your job. But you're doing right. your job. I mean, am I going to send you away because you're overweight? <laughs> you're not on. You're not on drugs. You have that under control. You you do have issues with food. <laughs> Uh, that I understand. I like food. But uh, I don't think that's somewhere you got to go away My for. My name is Artie Lang, and I like food. Could you do what Lindsay Lohan did? What did she, she do? She did a program that they let her out to work every day. He's not even interested in going to see a psychiatrist. Well, let me see, see about nah, that. No. Listen, he could do a lot of I gotta things. Do is lose fucking weight. That's what I got to do. That's, and you could go let to. Let me tell you something. That is my number one biggest fucking problem right now. If I could lose this weight somehow, and I, I promise you, I will. Everything my in my point, life will be a million times better. It's just I'm I'm too fat to function right now. But and my point it is, me. should you be going home every night, or should you be going to some place where you could not do what you're doing now? What jail? You know, at this Where's point, it gonna go? Listen, I've been I've been uh, spiraling out of control to the point where I had to go to away. So I know when that's coming up, and I'm not even close to that. Oh really? Okay. I mean, look, in a way, I made this decision. Uh, a couple of years ago, I said uh, to the guys producing Beer League, I said, guys, listen, uh, you know, these these investors who may or may not be shady are signing checks, and it's three weeks till we shoot, and I can't function as a human being without heroin. So they were like, oh, my God. And uh, they were like, what are we going to do? Because we don't want to make that phone call that you wasted a million bucks. And I said, well, 
I I got to take a hit here. I just I have to take a week for myself and lock myself in my room like Miles Davis or something and get off heroin. Just yeah. go through the withdrawals. And they, like, stood guard by my place, and they said, what about the show? And I said, listen, they're going to fucking go nuts. I'm going to have to come back and take my lumps, but what am I going to do? I, I, I desperately need a week or two to do this, and I have to take it. All right, and so that's, that's what my I did. point. He knows what he has to do, and there's plenty of but help But why should you hit rock bottom? Uh, no. You know, that's the sadness of the human condition. That's right. Instead of doing what, something when you have a problem and it's not necessarily rock bottom, you could go to get help. I think you should be in a daytime, you you know, work release program. <laughs> work release program. Nathan, go ahead in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This How about is Nathan. a hand release program? Nathan, you're on the air, and I must move along because it's 1030. Go ahead, Nathan. Yes. I thought I had to talk, man. I remember listening to my mom, and I was like... Nathan. Yes. Quickly, come on. Hey, what's up? Hey. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I was wanting to know uh, if you could help me. Quickly, quickly. Okay, uh, I was in the Special Olympics, and I've been in it for my whole life. And uh, after my job found out that I was in it, they're treating me differently. You're saying you're retarded? There is hardcore, like, reading and uh, mathematics and stuff like Why that. Why don't you go work for Clear Channel? <laughs> you just sound kind of stupid. Yeah, they hire lots of special people over there. <laughs> No, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think the whole team over there is, is, is special, special ed. Are you interested in the, the morning job in Chicago? The morning Do you job think is... you could get a 0. 0.0? 0. Oh, no. 0. Zero. I mean, I'm sorry. Kind of... I guess. I don't know. That was on On Demand. I rented that deal. Zero point <laughs> zero. I had to watch it. Uh, I don't know what you want me to do, Nathan. They found out at work that you're retarded? Yes, sir. And they're treating me completely different. Like, they're trying to keep from firing me, and they're just trying to... It feels like I'm the only black person there. Like, I feel like that's how they're treating me. You're oh, black? Oh, you're not black, but you feel like a black person. I do. That's what I feel like. Mm. Oh, the worst thing for a white person to go through is to feel like a black person. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, Kristen, you're on the air. Go ahead, Boston. <laughs> yes, Kristen. That's torture. Hey, hi. Yes. I, think that, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I think that Alec Baldwin, like, there's something to be said for somebody who's willing to travel across the country just to let you have it. Like, it's probably better for her to know that her father cares about her than... Well, there's a difference between care and when you're 11 years yeah, old getting the shit scared out of you. you my father's going to get on a plane stuff. and fly and straighten me out. He's doing that to satisfy oh, him. Yeah, but, like, we didn't hear all the good stuff. She's not going to play all the good phone calls and all the, you know, how many times he's like, get the bullet and, like, okay, yeah, but, but, but wait a second, wait, wait a second. Off. If you make, it, it's like, that's what, you sound like what a woman who gets beaten sounds like. <laughs> the husband comes home and he goes, honey, I know I gave you two black guys. I'm so sorry. And then no, he's so Howie. loving, and he's so wonderful, and he gets her flowers and chocolate, and he fucks her real good, and he goes, baby, you're the greatest. And then a year later, he punches her in the head again. And then she's stirring news happening. Call us 877-33-SERIOUS. Choose channel 100 or email us your news tip at howard100news at serious-radio.com. All right, there he is, Steve Legg from the Howard 100 News Department on all day, bringing you the news from the Howard Stern Show. Let's go over to John Hine. John Hine, wrap-up show, 11 o'clock, or as close as we can get to it. John, John your show is causing lots of controversy. Mm -hmm. Trouble. Cause, trouble, cause trouble between um, Jason and Artie. What do you think about Artie's accusation that you guys are not funny, therefore you should not be commenting on him? Uh, well, one of the things we're going to talk about is how Jason struck a chord with Artie when he speculated on what was wrong when he went missing during the gossip game last week. So we'll see how everybody's doing after sharing their concerns and have an unfunny discussion to see who will be able to make amends. All right, there it is. More unfunfiness on oh, the rap show. Artie. Okay. <laughs> Plus, uh, <laughs> Howard left a message for Rock engagement party, but I think we should lead off with angry Artie, who is not too pleased about our uh, unfunny comments on last week's wrap-up show, Karen. You know what? I, I want to take this moment to apologize in the sense that it probably was, like we talked about on the air today, this show is, is a discussion and a dissection of what happened on the show earlier today, but it was probably wrong to have that discussion without Artie here. I think, that's, I think that was his, the thing he was pissed off about. If he was sitting here... And we said, Artie, I think you're up to something, and he could defend himself. I think he wouldn't have been as mad. Well, I think what set him off was his mom calling. You know, that's really, you know, she heard that, and and we were having a serious conversation about it. And any time your mom's, you, right. you know how that the is. O the only thing I thought about that is why would his mom be upset about the wrap-up show, but not about the actual event that happened? You know, right. in other words, I would think that if his mom were listening and she heard that Artie was gone for 20 minutes, that might upset her. But then I guess hearing Jason say it out loud. 
and you know other people say they think it's true too is upsetting. Now I understand he was angry and 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 really heated, but he hit Jason really hard. Yeah, I've seen Artie get mad like that a handful of times. He did that to John once early on. We knew Artie for like a year or a year and a half, and something happened. John was needling him on the air, and Artie just like I always say, it's fascinating to watch a comedian turn off the comedy and just become a real person. And Artie does that, you know, I've seen him do it like two or three times. And this one time with Stuttering John, he goes, all right, John, you want to go down this road? You want to go down this road? Let me tell you something. You want me to tell all the crap I know about you? Start it now and let's do it. And there was no humor in that. And I was like, wow. So, listen, we're all capable of getting that mad. But he was absolutely angry today without the comedy. Now, Sal, you said a couple things on last week's show. Did Artie get at you at all? or did he I just... actually avoided him. On purpose? Yeah, I mean, it was so uncomfortable, so uneasy. I, I mean, we're just trying, we care about the guy, and we're saying, hey, something might be up. We say it on the show every day, call us, call in. But what I'm saying is we shouldn't say that. We, should, we, we should... shouldn't, right, and Gary's right. I mean, he's not here to defend himself, but uh, we're saying it out of care, and uh, I don't want to say anything else except um, I, it's kind of odd to take Subutex if you're not taking drugs, you know, which was kind of strange today. But he, but he explained that by saying that now he's put himself in a, in a risk situation. Now, wh- how he got there, I'm not sure. But he's in a risk situation, so I get it. Subutex is used to wean yourself off of drugs. It's for, uh, for the physical um, but he, side effects. So, it, but the way he's explaining it is, is if he feels that he wants to take something uh, now for two days, it's, it's, it would be pointless for Artie to take something because for the next two days, it's going to be meaningless. So now he knows he's got two days to not do anything to get his shit together again. That's how he explained it. Sonny in Jersey, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, you know, I, I can't even believe Artie had the balls to get angry at this. When you come to work in, in the way that he does on a show like the Howard Stern show with his television cameras and, like, everything is dissected, and, you know, you, you come in the way he does where he can't keep his eyes open, I mean, how do you get mad when people start speculating, uh, I mean, if something's going on? Jason didn't say anything that wasn't painfully obvious to, to everyone who's, who's ever seen a, an episode of TV and already uh, nodding off. See, it's a weird thing because how about, because Artie will talk about his past drug use so openly and even make a jokes about it that you forget that talking about what might be would piss him off. You know what I mean? Like Artie will tell you any episode that he had. Right. So you, you just think that he's so open to talk about anything that that wouldn't bum him out. But I do understand why he gets bummed out by it because he's got a career. Why do you think Howard gives him a pass when he, you know, starts sleeping in the studio? I mean, anyone else, he would probably throw a shit fit if they slept through the show every day. Why do you think Artie gets a pass? And we talked about it today, how, how Howard got really angry at uh, Craig Gass when he fell asleep during the show one time. I don't, you know, there's the whole, I can't explain it, but the whole Artie package is what you take for the show. And I know that one of the reasons why we liked Artie right from the get-go was not only was he really funny, and it's almost like he, it's almost like, um... Not only is he unbelievably funny, but it's like one of our fans has the ability to sit in there and already talks about his life. Right. And that's, listen, that's what Howard loves. Howard loves a guy who's willing to come in. You know, when Artie told that pig story, that's a heavy duty story, yet unbelievably entertaining and unbelievably funny. Jace, how you feeling? I'm feeling okay. Uh, I don't want to bore your audience to death, so I won't talk too oh, much today. Well, we won't let you. Okay, but thank you. Are you and Artie on uh, on speaking terms? Yeah, I mean, Artie, you know, Artie apologized for having an outburst on the air, and I apologize for. I understand where he's coming from in the sense that you know, his, listen, I'm the last person in the world who wants my mother calling me crying and saying she heard I was on drugs. So I, I didn't think about how it would impact his life off the air by saying what I said and not saying it to his face off the air. Uh, but I, he was clearly mad at me, and, he, and I think he clearly is still mad at me. And and I get it on one point, and on another point, I I, I don't know. I really think he doesn't like me. Like I feel like he just, I he I'm I'm always quick to make him angry where other people aren't. What do you mean? I don't, there's just been other things that have happened where Artie seems to get really mad at me and 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 yell at me, and then not. You know, other people, like, you know, like I'm saying, like, I mean, I, I am far from the only person to say I think Artie was doing drugs on the air, and yet I was the complete focus of his attention this morning. Well, he said to me that you, you were the one that he heard. You know what I mean? Like, he heard a, a brief snippet, I guess, of you saying what you said, and that's what set him off. Right. But I have a feeling if Gary said the exact same thing, uh, he wouldn't have gotten a tirade that I got this You think morning. that's true, Gary? Yeah, to some degree. I think he might have been angry with me, but I don't think it would have manifested itself in the same way that it did to Jason. It was a complete... You know, it was it was one of those things that starts out as a joke where, you know, listen, you fucking nerd, never got laid, virgin, boring asshole. And then all of a sudden, like, when you get to the ninth adjective, you're just like, wow, he's mad. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't think he would have done that to me. And, you know, and what I said on the show, 
on the wrap-up show wasn't as definitive as what Jason said. So I think that's like it was. A, Jason was definitively. This is what I think, and that's what Artie's mother heard, and that's what Artie heard, and that's what pissed him off. Well, you're probably like that effeminate, nerdy, hairy virgin that picked on Artie all his life. <laughs> totally. Well, I mean, we're not here, and we shouldn't speculate on that. But here's a clip of uh, how what he said to Jason. All of a sudden, yeah. Jason's Mr. Cool. I this, play that. This, this nerdy virgin, <laughs> this nerdy hairy virgin that we hired is Fonzie on the wrap-up show, thinking I'm on drugs. All your drug-related past faggot friends from wherever you grew up in <laughs> Southern California, you hairy faggot. Are you mad at that wrap-up show stuff? <laughs> yeah, I'm mad at what Jason said. I think I need on drugs. He was falling asleep while he was talking to me. Hmm. You know, no one falls asleep when I'm No one falls asleep when I'm talking. You nerdy virgin hairy fag. Call him a rude little pig. I hate him. I hate See, him. that's rough, man. I mean, that's real anger there, and it's you know what? It's stuff. It's shit he's been thinking about. Like, I mean, he's insane. I, I don't know what his California thing. I lived in California yeah. a few years. I he's love he threw in that. That's like yeah, a reference cool. that nobody knows. Like Jason lived in Southern California for a for, small period like of time. Four years. I already lived in California longer than I have. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Look, there was something I wrote, like, a million when the website first started. And I was I was just doing a, uh, a weekly comment about observations about what was going on in the show. And one of the things I wrote was that Scott DePace and Artie like to bounce this rubber ball down the hall during the commercial breaks. I wrote a line that in retrospect did come off kind of snooty, I guess, but I wrote a line, they seem to amuse themselves bouncing the ball up and down the hall. Artie got so mad at me. I mean, he was furious. He wouldn't talk to me for like weeks. He was rude. He was mean. He was very angry and not nice to me for, I would say, a good part of a year, if not longer. Really? And I still think he somewhere part, like I think that was early on when I got to meet him, and somewhere now he's got a set that I'm just this, this snooty, snobby, nerdy, look down on him kind of person, which is totally not true. I mean, do you think it's do you think it's a little bit of who the fuck are you to talk about me? Like, who? What have you ever done? No. Or do I, you think it's what do you think? I it is? think I I really get the impression that he thinks that I kind of look my nose down at him. I, that's the impression oh, really? I get, which is totally not true. I think. I mean, and I've said this before uh, many times. I think Artie's uh, obviously the fun, one of the funniest people on the show. I think he's incredibly smart and talented, obviously. I mean, he's lived a completely different lifestyle than I've led, but th- I don't look down on him for that. But I swear to you, ever since that comment, I remember one time... A- ...over to him, and he goes... <sighs> yeah, he's like, oh, I, I got to remember that your mom's a big fan of me when I talk about it. Or something like that. Like, like, just like... but. It's not funny. Like, right. I gotta, like find, was, I gotta find one nice thing about you when I think about you. Right. Yeah. And it was just like it was so weird. And then you know, but that was years ago, and I, I, I felt things got better. But I guess it just opened up the, uh, opened up the dam. Or maybe I'm perceiving things completely wrong. I'm sure Artie, you know, I'm just a bore, boring little nerdy guy. Artie probably doesn't spend two seconds of his day thinking about. But, well, uh, I, I will say one thing that, and, and I, I don't blame you on this, but at one point during that conversation when Artie was ripping you to shreds, you threw me under the bus. You know, deflections the great art here, and he goes. Well, Gary said something, too, and that went, like, in Artie's ear and out. This is Beatles, is as bad as can be knows he's the best. This is Beatles, is as bad as can be knows he's the best.